This is a HeadGum Podcast. What's up, guys? There are a million things demanding your time. Contact lenses should not be one of them. That's why we, the Doughboys, I'm the only one who's here, but I speak for both of us. We're excited about a great new company called Simple Contacts that is making the process of renewing your prescription and buying contacts, well, simple. That's the name. You can do it from your phone or computer in a matter of minutes. Get a load of this. You don't have to take time off. You don't have to spend hours at the doctor. You don't have to talk to some weird optometrist who's going to lean a little too close to you, ask number one or number two, just to renew your prescription. You can now do it online in under five minutes. This is Vision Care for the 21st century. Here's how it works. Take a quick self-guided vision test from your phone or computer. That's right. You can do it from your phone or computer. Reviewed by a licensed doctor in 24 hours, you receive a renewed prescription and reorder your brand of contacts. It's so, so simple. Again, Simple Contacts, that's the name, that's the brand. If you had an unexpired prescription, you can use that too. Just upload a photo of it or your doctor's info and order your lenses in minutes for a great price. They do all the hard work for you. Buying more contacts has never been easier and why should it be hard in the first place, right? Again, Simple Contacts, that's the whole gimmick here. Simple Contacts offers every brand of lenses. Their prices are unbeatable. The vision test is just $20. Compare that with an annual appointment, which can be up to $200 without insurance. Nobody has insurance these days, right? I mean, everyone's getting screwed. Joe and Jane Paycheck are taking it up the kazoo. Shipping is free. And best of all, our listeners get $20 off their first Simple Contacts order to save $20 on your lenses. Just go to simplecontacts.com slash doughboys or enter the code doughboys at checkout. Again, this is not a replacement for your periodic full health exam. You still need those occasionally, but it is the most convenient way to renew a prescription and reorder your contacts. Check out Simple Contacts and get $20 off by going to simplecontacts.com slash doughboys or just enter code doughboys at checkout. Save yourself time, money, and a headache with, what's that name? Simple Contacts. In 1866, Cadwallader Washburn opened the Minneapolis Milling Company to compete with another local miller named C.A. Pillsbury. Washburn and Pillsbury merged businesses just three years later, and though Pillsbury's name endures, it was Washburn's savvy that powered the company, leading to a succession of mergers, acquisitions, and engineering innovations that made Minneapolis into the flower capital of the country. In 1928, Washburn's company converged with four other mills to form General Mills, a massive conglomerate that even today is a titan of the food industry. Over the decades, General Mills generalized its business beyond mills, launching the iconic Betty Crocker brand, expanding into the toy industry with the creation of Play-Doh, and even dabbling in military hardware, developing submarines and high-altitude balloons in conjunction with the Navy. In 1970, GM added another revenue source, restaurants, acquiring an upstart seafood chain known as Red Lobster. The shellfish concept success led to General Mills establishing a separate restaurant division, which would later become known as Darden, and in 1982, General Mills launched an Italian-American restaurant in Orlando, Florida. Calculated from day one to be a nationwide brand with mainstream appeal, it was a quick hit, becoming the fastest-growing sit-down chain of the decade. Other than pizza, Italian food was uncommon in those swaths of the U.S. without sizable Italian-American populations, so GM's admittedly generic take became many Americans' entry point to the cuisine. The restaurant's value-oriented marketing was reflected in its original slogan, Good Times, Great Salad, referencing its still signature all-you-can-eat salad, soup, and breadsticks. Though today its slogan has shifted away from gluttony, first with, when you're here, you're family, and now, we're all family here. A welcoming greeting from an eatery coldly conceived as a profit center by one of the most powerful food conglomerates on Earth. This week on Doughboys, we return to Olive Garden. <laughs> Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, alongside my co-host, Guillermo Del Taco, Mitchy Two Spoons, <laughs> Mike Mitchell. Hey, great filmmaker. Hey, so. a day, Del Toro? Del Toro. Oscar winner. Oscar winner. And hey, that uh, that award-winning roast was courtesy of Jean-Paul Ruby. If you have an insult you'd like me to use on Mitch at the top of the show, roastspoonman at gmail.com is the address. Yeah, that, that roast wins an award for uh, biggest asshole who sent it in. <laughs> Fuck that guy. You know, Mitch, they, they, uh, speaking of Del Taco, they opened up a new Del Taco near where we live, Nick, right I, by our apartment, within a one-mile radius. By, by your apartment. By my apartment. Yes. I, Nick and I have not, even though it will happen... 
Do you think me, you, and Natalie are going to move in together at some point? <laughs> I think I think we should. Just turn it into a polyamorous triad. <laughs> Except oh. one where nobody fucks. <laughs> Uh, we're both just getting cuckolded constantly <laughs> that sounds about right yeah i, I just I, I just felt even more for just the ease of you know we could record the podcast come downstairs i'd be just waking up mm. <laughs> <laughs> i think what we what needs to happen is we need to legally adopt you i think that's probably mm. the easiest way. i like that idea yeah. actually uh but the, you know what that means <laughs> what? i'm gonna sleep slip on my diapy <laughs> That's fair. If you adopt me as a as a child, yeah, I get to wear a diaper. We have that. We have that rearing phase that mm-hmm. we'll go through. We'll do a quick like Billy Madison style, where I go for the, through each age in a couple weeks. We'll have an accelerated period where I change your diaper and then I also nurse you. <laughs> and we'll put that up on the Patreon. That'll be a, that'll be the ten dollar tier. You gotta wear. First of all, you gotta wear. I want you to wear like nursing breasts. You know okay, what I'm saying? Right. And I want it to be filled with chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba Juice Chop Chip, as I call it. Of course, it. Bubba Juice Chop Chip mm-hmm. with milk. Um, Mitch, I just wanted to, to, to finish my anecdote real quick. There's no, there's no, I, I don't know why. I mm-hmm. just, I feel because I started it, I feel like maybe people want closure. It's not interesting, but it's, they opened a new Del Taco right where, near where Nally and I live. Mm-hmm. A stone's throw. I hit that bad boy up like, I know, so frequently now. I went you last said half night, a dozen times, half a dozen last... times in the past like week and a half. Wow. It's, it's getting out of hand. You're going almost every other night. Yeah, I need to stop. It's too much. It's excessive. No way. I want to see, I want to see Fat Weiger again. <laughs> well, he'll make a comeback. Also, you're going to have to get a, if I, if you, if I do go into this baby mode, mm-hmm. which I plan on doing. Yeah. You got to get yourself a pretty big baby Bjorn, huh? <laughs> You think I'm going to carry you around in a Bjorn? That's a part of it. <laughs> uh, I want to say a little uh, howdy how to Mitchie Two Spoons Nation. I'm embarrassed that the guests had to see that. I'm embarrassed when any guest has to see it. And here is here's a little drop. Hmm. Hey, it's me, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello there, folks. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Quiet, Goofy, or I'll make you a pet. I'll take away your talking rights. I'm gonna lose my agency. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. You know what? He's our good, he's our good drop guy. We have one. We have one of those. <laughs> Robert Persinger. Okay. He does a great job. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Nice little bit, bit of audio editing. Robert, he signed off Robert Drop King Persinger. Whoa, getting a little <laughs> cocky there. Tone it down, Persinger. Um, also, I he, think, hey, you know what? I think you're not the Drop King. You're a, the Slop King. Whoa, shit. Yeah, that's right. I just hit with a Persinger. <laughs> Well, good. Now he's going to roast you one of the upcoming drops. It'll be great. Okay. Uh, he also, the, in the in the drop, like, the, the you know, it's like a SoundCloud thing. Yeah. And within it, there's a picture of Goofy, but he's, I wanted to show you this. Mm-hmm. He's like the, he's like a, like a fat Goofy. Oh, that's fine. I hope this doesn't play again, but like, like. That's this, thumbnail. This, this looks like an old school fat oh, Goofy. Oh, yeah, right. He's been it's pumped like school, up a little bit. Yeah, old school Weiger in a way. Hmm. Yeah, was that was that like a period of time? I mean, like I, I don't I know think the, cannot. There was a, and you know some some Disney, uh, some House of Mouse acolyte out there will mm-hmm. probably know the exact history of of when if, if Goofy had a Zatvig period. But I think mm-hmm. he was. I I really think that he that was probably like an episode where he just ate a bunch and he got fat and that was like uh, a joke. That I'm that that's just my guess. He plumped up a little bit, but that wasn't a, th- a long period of. So the am I just life. on episode one of my life? <laughs> <laughs> when is the second episode going to start? I'm all thin again. Yeah, that'd be great. And you age up five years, and you have a relationship with the uh, woman who took care of you when you were a boy. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> you know the classic episode one to episode two arc. <laughs> I should have gotten that. Yeah, so right. I apologize. I didn't. Hey, Mitch. Right. Yeah, yes. let's introduce, let's our, introduce guest. our guest. Yeah, it's been too long. He's an actor and stand-up comedian from Conan and at Midnight. His album Model Minority is available now. Joel Kim Booster. Hi, Joel. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Long time listener, first time caller. Oh boy. <laughs> it's always great to see where these things are recorded. I really like that you have 
um, a picture of yourself on the, prominently yeah. displayed, Mitch. There's, that's there's, really uh, impressive to I, me. I, you know, I, I explained that. Uh, just we touched on that in a recent episode with our with our buddy uh, Sheer. I, I, I got to say this about it. it it's, it's not inte- that I, I would never put up. First of all, I don't like looking at myself. <laughs> If oh, I had no. my way, all mirrors would come down in the world. Oh, wow, mm. boy. That's well, bleak. Hey, look, and this isn't a pro vampire stance I have here. I'm not trying to get rid of the mirror so that vampires can blend in more with the regular mm-hmm. people. I'm saying this because I don't like to look at my body right. or my face and this all those things. This feels like a late season Black Mirror episode. <laughs> <laughs> Once they run out of all the ideas. <laughs> They're going to get there soon enough. Oh, um, yeah. They're probably already there, I think. I would never put a pic. I mean, like, it, it, this just happened naturally. And then, you know what? My mom saw it, and my mom liked it. And then you got to keep it. And then I got to keep it. If mom likes it. Yeah, if mom likes it. It's a conversation piece. And Mitch, sure. you're, too, you're too hard on yourself about your looks. You're a good-looking guy. Yeah. You have terrible taste, Wyler. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, you were telling us uh, before we started, you grew up in Chicago. I did. Well, I grew up, to be fair to the people listening who okay. will call me out, I grew up in the southwest suburbs of Chicago. Okay. And then I did, to be fair, move there uh, to the city proper after college. And Got I lived it. for many years. Um, but yeah, it was great. I love it. I what a, love so a big food town, the Midwest, a big mm-hmm. food region. Is there, a, you know, obviously everyone everyone talks about the pizza, the yeah. hot dogs, and and you know that that's I think that's what people think about it. They Do you get, have any affection for it? They get. Well, here's the thing. Like yes. I was started saying this before, but like I don't really like to delve into like. Uh, regional food debates because oh, I interesting. think it's stupid. But I will say a couple things about the foods of Chicago since I've moved. I lived in uh, New York for many years now, and now I just moved here. Right. And first of all, deep dish pizza is not Chicago pizza. Not in my mind. Chicago Real Chicago pizza is thin, very thin yeah. crust in squares. Like that is Chicago pizza. And deep dish pizza yeah. shouldn't even be called pizza. Honestly, I right. like it. Mm-hmm. I like it, but it's not our pizza. Um, but a lot of people tweet that at us that the, that the, they they think a Chicago pie is more of a thin crust. Yeah. Uh, at a, f- a few places that I've got, the, the, who who sent us those pizzas? Now I can't remember. That's rude of me. Paisanos, right? And and the, there's like a thin crust there that I had that I love. They sent us a freeze dried pie. That thin yeah. crust was out of this world. Yeah, it was. Oh, it was, so it was delicious. And and yeah, no, that's that's funny. That, like a lot of people who live in Chicago are like, I don't eat dip, deep dish. Nobody a lot. does. No. I, I, I think I've eaten deep dish. When I lived in Chicago, mm-hmm. I ate deep dish maybe twice. It was mm. something growing up in the suburbs, it was a much bigger thing, I think, because we were we bought into the lie of deep dish. <laughs> um, but it's like too much. It's right. like who, I, it's, like, it's unwieldy. I can't yeah. do it. And I, But I will say this Chicago hot dogs are the best. It's impossible to find a, a hot dog that is quite like a Chicago hot dog anywhere else in the country. Um, New York hot dogs are bullshit. Um, wow, they really, really are. It's it was oh, man. so hard. Even anything like classify any. I hate this going will cause some. I'm going to tell you, it's going to cause some controversy. There's oh gonna- <laughs> well, come at me. Find me on Twitter. I hate Joel Cam is my <laughs> handle. DM me. Literally, it's they're they're trash. And there are so many places in New York that would like sell a Chicago style hot mm. dog, quote unquote, mm. and it was garbage they're always wow. garbage i i actually just got back from australia to like uh yesterday the land down under i i went to <laughs> excuse me nick <laughs> it's the land down under you that's exci- such a great dialect I just, I, just, <laughs> I just also want to say that you excitedly yelled out the land down under when you heard that he was came back from australia right. <laughs> hey you know we have some aussie listeners I, I mean, probably, I've partly got Australia on the brain because of uh, Joe Ingles' outstanding playoff performance in, in, oh. in for the Utah Jazz. Oh. But sorry, I apologize. I was I stepped on there. There was no reason for me to shout out the land down under. No, I derailed. I derailed your anecdote. Go ahead. I, it's, it feels pointless now. Um, <laughs> no, I, in this show, we, you're right. I went to I went to uh, like a, a, a Coney. Actually, the the park that Coney Island was based off of. This park was built first, and then the same people oh, wow. went and went over and built uh, Coney island uh, the oldest roller coaster in that hemisphere which is not a selling point for me personally <laughs> um i don't i wouldn't lead off with that right literally i'll get to the food in a second but um the person who runs the roller coaster which is the same roller coaster at coney island stands on the roller coaster the entire time 
like literally stands operating the roller coaster. Whoa. And it and it split our group because half the group was like, well, if this dude's standing, then I feel fully safe because yeah. obviously if he can stand on it while it's going, then what what could happen to us? But I was so I was sitting right behind him as he was standing and I was so uncomfortable the whole time because I was like, he's going to die. This man will die. Yeah, that's, this man that's will scary. fly off. How many employees do they lose every year to this roller coaster? <laughs> no, he's not like hooked into it at all. He's truly just chilling on the roller coaster as it's going down these hills. Standing in the like front of the car. Crazy. In the middle of it. In, in the, the middle, middle of it. Of it. Wow. Yeah. And it uh, it was wild and I hated every second of it. It was I couldn't enjoy the roller coaster because I was so concerned for his safety. But I got I went and I ordered a hot dog from the thing and I'll show you guys the picture later, but it is it was the most disgusting thing I've ever uh. seen visually. Um, it tasted terrible orally. Mm. I mean, it was making sounds. Um, <laughs> just every sense was bad. But yeah, uh, hot dogs are a big deal for me. Claudia, our, our, we had Claudia Darty on here, and she, mm-hmm. she kind of said that she gave Australian food a little bit of a hard time. But what? It's what is great. it? What about the hot dog specifically? Was so it was repulsive. Um, it was so much bigger than you could ever imagine. Okay. It was, mm. and, it, and not lengthwise, like width-wise. It was w- wider than a sausage, mm-hmm. and it sort of, Eek. it curved in a very phallic way, okay. which as a gay person should have done something. <laughs> for, I should have liked it more than I did. Oh, and then weirdly, so like, I actually, I ordered the hot dog, and they sort of, the way that it, it was described, it sounded like a New York hot dog with mustard mm-hmm. and sauerkraut. And right. Like, and that sounded good to me. Uh, they put all the sauerkraut and mustard in like the bun to piled on the bun and then set the hot dog on uh, top of the bun. Okay. Yeah. So it's not even practical to eat. Like you, you guys will flip when I show you the pick. <laughs> that's what, that's one of those things where that's just like the, the it, it, it's like the game of telephone that resulted in yeah. that food. It's like not really the way you would do it. And just, a, just enough is different where it's not at all an accurate representation right. of what the, of how it should be. I think this is just the classic thing. If it's it's Australia down under, and then the the they put it in reverse. They've got the, <laughs> they got right. the ingredients in there first, and then the hot dog. Yeah. It's it's like how the toilets go backwards down there. Mm. Now, obviously, Claudia has more context for this than I do because she's from there. But I've been now to Sydney and Melbourne mm. for extended periods of time, and. Um, Melbourne less so than Sydney by far. Melbourne's actually like a pretty decent food city, but Sid- I mean, the food is just not great. Yeah, by and large, it's pretty bad. That's a I don't understand what happened. It's a well, it's a giant prison country. <laughs> <laughs> so you get prison style food. Prison style food. Yeah, that isn't makes that, sense. Isn't that originally what it was? It was just it was a, a prison. Yeah, colony, it was yeah. a penal colony. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and then they. They really turned it around. They made it, They <laughs> built a roller coaster. They built a crazy <laughs> roller coaster, and yeah, I was in Disney with my mom and sister. Just, just not as cool as Australia, but uh, uh, no, yeah. it, it is. It, we want to. We we plan on going to Australia. We're gonna. We were gonna go this summer. I don't know. There's a big discussion about. it. I don't know if it's gonna happen. Um, my mom heard about the hot dogs down there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, I was just thinking about stand like we, we rode Space Mountain. My mom almost died. Uh, I mean, she like was like, "I'll do it," and then she at the end of it, she was like, "Oh," oh. and like was like, "I can't." Like, it, if it went again, like maybe my mom would have had to have medical assistance or something. <laughs> just but, stressed her out so much, or yeah, you know, the riding in that ride. I'm just just thinking of someone standing up. I'm like, I feel like if you stood up in that ride, you'd lose your head, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, well, like that was the, the other thing. Like, there were parts of the roller coaster where if a you couldn't put your hands up because mm-hmm. there, yeah. there, it was not a well designed roller coaster. And I, I'm not into wood. Like any sort of roller coaster that gets shut down in the rain. Like, yeah. Right. Come on. <laughs> Those rickety wooden roller coasters. If coaster, rain yes. can take you out, then it's not it's not safe. I don't think. I think yeah. I should get rid of it. Yeah. Exactly. Michael, what do you do in the rain? I would. What do I do in the rain? Yeah. Be, you know, with your inner circuits and all. I tell you, that's that's the only time I'm happy. <laughs> You're only Shirley happy Man- when it me and Shirley Manson. <laughs> Peas in a pod. Uh, there was that water. You, you guys were talking about getting, uh, you know, having some sort of injury from standing up in a roller coaster. And there actually is some sort of law on the books or some sort of test they do because there was that that water park. I, mean, I was I was looking it up real quick. Oh god! Um, where that guy that kid got beheaded. Oof. It's so grisly. By the way, I just want to I just want to give a little background. On this Weiger talked about this for a good like six or so days. <laughs> <laughs> of of the boy who was beheaded, it is it, it's horrifying. I'll say this, it is a horrifying, terrible thing. But but also a fascinating story because every 
element about it. The world's tallest water slide they built in Kansas at uh-huh. uh, sh- uh, a, a Schlitterbahn water park, which is Schlitter like a bond, micro. Yeah. yeah, it's like a micro chain that's kind of janky. But the thing that's crazy about it is that the designers were just these ambitious guys who had no engineering experience. Oh, that's great. So yeah, so they they <laughs> they like basically made this death trap, and then you know like. People were getting injured for years on this thing, like horrible neck injuries and like broken <laughs> limbs, and they just covered it up. They just like made their young staff just like cover like their lifeguards and their, their people who work at the nursing station. They just made them cover it up until there was one whistleblower, and then that uh, happened around the same time. This kid got like this ten year old kid who happened to be the son of a prominent pro- politician, um, literally got beheaded going down this water slide. <laughs> This is crazy. Yeah. I feel like the true villains in this piece are the life, the the people that were the imp- like. Who has such loyalty to a water park <laughs> <laughs> that they're like, no, we have to keep our mouths shut and protect. Yeah. This. Right, like that's a good point. Well, I had a lot of jobs at sixteen, and I w- did not care enough about any of them to let people get injured on them without saying something. I wonder if I, I wonder if I would have been one of the brain. Wa- I, I bet you I probably would have hit <laughs> secrets for them. I would have. Yeah. I think I could. I, I think as a kid, I could have very easily covered something up if they were just like, "Hey, the guy broke his toe. It's fine. We gave him a free pass." Like, yeah, just, just, you know. I think I could. I could may, probably be talking. To, my, I like my, to think like I'd be the good. You know, I'd be like, "Oh no, I'd be son? the guy who'd stand up for it." No, not the good son. <laughs> Come on, like it was bad news. <laughs> oh yeah, the good son was bad. Yeah, I, the, I mean, the I think regular I, son was good. Yeah. I think I was the regular son. Yeah. I'm good. And I'm a little bit more like this, Mac. We all this know isn't my story to tell, so I won't use any of the names, but yeah. I will tell it. Um, but um, a friend of mine, when he was young, went to Disneyland and they went to the water park there. The Polar. What is it? I, I'm not. A oh, Disney yes. Head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I went, went there too, I believe. He, he went down one of the water slides. So it was, it was one of the ones where they had to climb up and his older brother went down first and then it was him and his mom and his older brother's head got impaled on something. Good God. And he didn't die. But in Whoa. order, because it was so tall, they, they were like, the quickest way to get down is to go down the slide. No. So they, him and his mom had to go down the slide through no. his brother's blood. And oh then by the time they got down to the bottom, literally they like took him to the hospital and like what, by the time they got to the hospital, Disney was there with like six lawyers, like black cars, everything. Jeez. And, and he's fine. But like they go to Disney now, they can go for life for free. Uh, whenever oh. they want they just like can't they like couldn't sue disney ever and everything is fine although it, my friend says his brother um is a little more aggressive now oh, and, wow. they, and they, oh, wow. they'll always wonder if it was because he was impaled at disney yeah um yeah maybe he had like minor brain trauma yeah but he's like otherwise fine like has That's a job crazy. is doing great is thriving hmm. as much as a person one people impaling and you get f- lifetime free at i know <laughs> it, and the thing is is like you do weigh it because you're like well if he's mostly fine and it's like anything, i don't know like, and also, like maybe the impaling would take out like some of my anxiety or like, some of the bad part of yeah, my brain. Yeah, that's a roll of the dice, I think, for you. <laughs> I just wonder you what would know. be what would be strong enough to penetrate your skull. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could remember the specifics of what impaled him yeah. on the water slide, but unfortunately, because again, it's not my story to tell. Yeah. I <laughs> am leaving out some important details of what exactly. It could impale you on a water slide. I'm surprised, Nick. You and I haven't ridden one of these death rides. Like, uh, we should we should ride that Schlitterbahn Schlitterbahn slide or whatever. And I don't think you can ride it anymore. No, I think it's been closed down. I can't ride many slides. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> they call me the clogger. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's gonna go straight to the Earth's core. <laughs> We, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I will say that story, and I was literally grabbing the sides of my face as you were telling it because it, it's horrifying. I, to me, there's, there's something so grisly and unnerving, specifically about the roller coaster slash theme park mishap that results in someone being maimed or killed yeah. because the whole thing that's fun about theme parks is like oh it's the the perceived danger it's mm-hmm. like oh i'm being i i'm being you know i'm like i'm like having fun but i'm not actually in danger i think i'm scared but there's there's no real danger but then, but then you read about these things and like that happens so frequently it's like if you you like went to see horror movies and then like one out of every hundred thousand people that saw a horror movie like the the killer in the movie like killed yep. that person. Jason was, jumped out of the screen and killed them. There was like a one. There was like a point zero 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 one. Like the beginning chance. of Scream Two. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. Someone gets murdered in a bathroom at yeah. a horror movie. 
one in ten times. I won tickets to Scream Two mm-hmm. on a uh, d- not WZLX but WBCN. That seems like a trap. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I think it was a weird. I got there and I, I was underage, and they just like let me in because I wasn't I wasn't eighteen yet. But it was like one of those things. I called into a radio show and like one. I'd never done that and have, have since never done that. But I called in and won tickets to a Scream Two premiere, oh. and that is you know what. Because it was like a premiere and stuff like that, that that opening was that worked really well. Yeah, I yeah. can watch it. And then also the Wayne's brothers, they did their version of it too. Which they was, famously sent it up. They famously, and that was a lot of fun. So great. Those saw, early scary movies are so good. They made me laugh a lot. You saw a CGI dick go through a guy's <laughs> go through a guy's ear. Yes, I yeah. I think it went in one. It went in one ear and came out the other. It ear. like yeah, like tickles his. It's like a glory hole situation. Like tickles his ear and then uh-huh. it goes in and penetrates his skull. And then I think you think he's dead and then he comes back later with his ear bandage. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I don't know if it goes all the way through to the other side. Anna Ferris. I think it does. What a discovery! I know. Oh, man. The first Anna Ferris yeah. movie. How yeah. about that? Well, not the first one, but how about that one? early one? I think those are big breakout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. Hey, shout out to those early scary movies. One and two. Oh, Rewatch Jesus. them. I have no idea if they hold up. They might not. So please don't hold Are up. We Let us know. Up? Hashtag uh, the scary movies do or do not hold up. Yeah. I, I, I hate theme parks. I hate roller coasters. Mm-hmm. I never took a physics class, so I don't understand how roller coasters work. And so therefore don't trust them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm constantly afraid I'm going to die. But go too frequently. Like I just yeah. went. My friend forced me to go on his birthday to Six Flags. And we uh. rode everything twice because it was raining in a Tuesday afternoon. Oh, wow. And I did begrudgingly had a lot of fun, but every single time, I think he wanted to kill me because I was just like, every time I was like, how many have died on this ride specifically? <laughs> I don't trust it. <laughs> did you ride Riddler's Revenge? Uh, maybe that might have been, it was, it was raining, so it might okay. have been closed. They like randomly closed some of them, but that does sound like one of the ones that we rode. There's a Batman ride. I, I haven't been to Six Flags in like 15 years, but there's a Batman ride and yeah. then there's the Riddler's Revenge, which they built as a response, I think, to the Batman ride. Mm. But there, there was this weird and I don't know they still have it, but the club music from the line queue at Riddler's Revenge is like stuck in my head. It's like it's like the Mario theme. It's just like a, a ditty that just comes to my head sometimes. Come a few bars. Two more minutes of this. <laughs> this is truly a nightmare and insane. I, that music doesn't. I feel like I would remember that music, okay. so I feel like we didn't ride that one. But I. Or you know fun. what? You could be like a normal human and not remember the music at all. <laughs> the, not, the, the, the sad thing about Six Flags is that it just looks like the the properties that they are allowed to have yes are so sad and like uh-huh. i feel like there's like a so like i re, like mrs taz <laughs> that they created for six flags <laughs> and like and then and then they Dude, have I, yeah, I, I saw her and my jaw dropped down to the ground and, and heart shot <laughs> and i saw mrs she taz she is thick <laughs> Um, and then they have like the all, even most of the superhero properties. If you look at like any of the art, it's the it, it was updated in like 2010. Yeah, maybe. yeah, it's like almost a decade old. Everything looks, it feels like you're not in a good time. It's funny that like 90s has a very you know a, like a a very certain aesthetic to it, and then 90s stuff, and uh-huh. then 2000 stuff is just kind of like shitty. It's just kind of like shitty looking. It was a weird. It's a era. weird time. It was I, like I feel, I feel like the Whoville at Universal or something is is nineties or like a like a just a shitty. It just doesn't look great. Everything is kind of aged poorly from yeah. that like like very early two thousands because it's like mm-hmm. you know like what like the biggest bands were like Stained and like <laughs> Limp Bizkit. <laughs> it was like this weird like rap rock was like this big oh. thing in music and then the movie like the early CG like looks so bad in movies yeah. like, like the Mummy two the CG in the Mummy two looks awful. It just looks about, nice as well. Is, it that, is that the is that the rock? That's the rock's one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they have a CG the, the rock. Scorpion King. Yeah, the, the oh, Scorpion yeah. King. The CG Scorpion bad. King looks awful. Awful. Yeah, it's like PlayStation yeah, One cinematic level, and it's like was in a movie. I I, I took a, a yoga class yesterday, and it was advertised as like it's it's like music is played, and it's like mm-hmm. upbeat music. And I was thinking it was going to be like Katy Perry, and I was like, that sounds fun. Like that sounds like an energetic class. And literally, I walk in, and the guy is he's like in his forties, and he sounds like he's from Jersey, and he's like, you're good. You got a real good practice. You got a real good yoga practice. <laughs> and the music was lit was literally stained. Pearl Jam, like 
ever that kind and i was like this is not what i expected from yeah, a right. yoga class that where it advertised like fun upbeat music right like, pod um <laughs> It, uh, it was actually, honestly, that was a highlight for me, though. Doing doing a do- downward dog to I feel so alive. I did feel so alive. I, I was like, this actually fits. I don't mind this. That would really catch me off guard because I, I do yoga and I feel like the the music the music is always like kind of like hotel lobby. Yes, it's like very yeah. like sort of you know. My question: Why do you do yoga? You got you've gotten the one move that you really ever wanted. All right, calm down. <laughs> why are can suck his own. Okay, come on. <laughs> He whispered it off mic. <laughs> I did a, 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 a what's it called? The cycling, a soul cycle. Soul cycle, right? Uh, I did I a soul. I did a soul cycle class, and let me tell you, not it was not good. It was not. First of all, it was like a, like me, and then a couple guys that I, that like uh, I was there with Van mm-hmm. uh, and a, a buddy Van Roby show. Uh, <laughs> good, good pronunciation. Uh, he talked me through it once. Uh, it's, yeah, it seems like you learned it. Uh, Van and a couple other people. And, you know, you put on the weird shoes and everything like that. And then there's like, of course, like these beautiful people, oh, right. men and women who just look great. And I got on the bike and I almost made it through that whole class. There was like five minutes left, and mm-hmm. I was like, I had to get the instructor. I was like, get, like I need to get off the bike. I could never. And 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 it was and like he couldn't get me off the bike. It was like, like a your disaster. feet are like bolted in, right? Your feet are bolted in. It's it's a it was a night. It's like that was. I know we bring up Freddie on the show a lot, but it's mm. like that's what Freddie would do to me. He'd bolt my feet to an exercise bike mm. and make me work like. And I, I just spin to win, bitch. <laughs> I I think I I I think because I grew up and I was so not athletic or good and mm-hmm. I like had such bad experiences in like gym classes and shit. Yeah. And now I I like I can't be in a group fitness class where someone's really enthusiastic. I mean yoga aside, like yoga doesn't feel like they're really watching you though. Like uh, yeah. it just I get right. I'm very bad. I have asthma. I would just be so bad. And then yeah. their enthusiasm I think would have the reverse effect that it's supposed to have on me. I would just be resentful. Of yeah. It. Yeah. I, I tell them to fuck off. Yeah. I, I just so I just grading. Fully agree with you. Yeah, because it is the thing about the a yoga class is it's like remarkably self conscious because it you're not self conscious for a group fitness setting because everyone is so kind of in their own yeah. world versus like I've done more of the the high intensity interval training like Oof. fit group fitness classes and mm. that to me I just like man I, I get why people are like enthusiastic and happy here but like I don't, don't want to high five everybody like that's just like too like I just like yeah. this is not the mood I'm in when I'm exercising so no crossfit for you ever no I don't think I could quite it's just not the, quite the right energy for me I think I need something a little bit more restrained I mm. like being by myself when I work out sure yeah. Yeah. I don't want anyone to look at me similar to this mirror thing we talked about earlier <laughs> I don't want to be seen, looked at, thought of in any way. Exactly. I would work out. I, I, you know, the one thing I do like about it is the darkness. I'd love to work out in the darkness. Ooh, yeah. mm. I'd love to do, I, I, like I said before, sun, if the sun went away for a year or so, I'd be fine with it. You're giving me an idea for a great business model, which is just a gym that is pitch black with no mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> it's half sensory deprivation, half, half a gym. Very dangerous. Lots I, it, of injuries. It seems like it would be, there would be a lot of injuries. Heavy lots weights of, lifting yeah, in the dark. Lots of kettlebells being swung about in the pitch black. <laughs> I would sign up. I feel like that's a good... that that is right up my alley to not be seen. Um, Nick, I was going to say to you, yes. when are we, when are we going to have our Anna Ferris breakout? You and me. <laughs> when, when are we going to have our star turn? Yeah. Well, this I'd is, say we're, too, this oh, is we're it. too old. Yeah, this is it. This is, this this is, is the it. peak. <laughs> this is it. This is our scary movie? Yeah, this, this episode with Joel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You're welcome, you guys. Thanks. <laughs> um, so, so I want to. We, we're going to talk Olive Garden today, which I know you worked at. But mm-hmm. I, before we we get into that, you are a fan of the chain Hooters. Oh yeah. What is it about Hooters <laughs> that makes you a a an excited patron? Um, I think. Well, a it. I do think the wings are really good at Hooters. They do have good I, wings. Yeah, I think yeah. they have a great wing, and mm-hmm. I do think there. It is like a cheeky sort of like this is not for me. You know, yeah, and I sure. love going into places where, that aren't for me. That's I funny. love forcing my way into spaces that I'm that that are not designed for me. <laughs> um, and so that 
was always fun. And we did, it was started in college because like one of my friends, I went to theater school and one of my friends who is another gay man would always every year have his birthdays at Hooters and just as like a bit. And that mm-hmm. was like early, uh, like us understanding what comedy was and like <laughs> for us a joke, all, all it needed to be was just us going to Hooters. And that was enough of a bit for us. Still pretty funny. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then we like, I generally really liked it. And I think, those girls are so lovely. And especially when yeah. they know that you are not there to ogle or touch them, they just chill out. You yeah. Know? They really just like slot. Suddenly their posture changes. Um, <laughs> you see, I love the relief on their eyes and you just shoot the shit with them. And like, mm-hmm. they're fun. They're mm. fun. It's a good time place. It's Hooters is, I mean, as a, a heterosexual man, male with probably negative testosterone, uh, <laughs> like uh, Hooters doesn't, Hooters has never appealed to me in the way of like one. It is awkward. Like that whole thing. Part of it is like, I'm like, oh man, I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I should feel bad. I do. I do feel bad, but then also I don't know if I should feel bad. Right. And I don't want to be creepy. I'm not comfortable being flirtatious with a woman yes. who's like interested in me, let alone like a yes. woman who's per- like that's that you put it perfect. Well, because right, yeah. I think the culture has moved forward enough that it's in. Im- embarrassing it's it is, embarrassing yeah. to go to hooters to actually use hooters for the way it was created and intended to be cre- like for like the people that it's for you watch them in hooters and you're like well, how do you live with yourself <laughs> like, <laughs> literally put up some more mirrors in hooters so that they can see how stupid they look well it's also the funny thing to be like like uh stuffed as fu- like stuffed as fuck eating like greasy food and then trying to be like that's the worst way, like for, like that combination of like sexy, with them being yeah. stuffed yeah. on like there's a beefy nothing burger I sucks. like better than being around people who make me hard than when I'm gassy. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like I love to be gassy and hard. Uh, like get two <laughs> great guys, right? Get super full off of chili cheese fries and then have a boner and jack off with your hand covered in wing sauce. Oh. Just like <laughs> the most disgusting combination. Yeah. Yeah, I uh I like I, I agree. The hey, old spice rub, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah, I don't I don't quite get it. I don't quite get the like the merging and it's also there's alcohol too. That's the other thing. So people mm-hmm. are getting drunk. So it's like you're getting your like all your vices are covered. It's like like you're, you're horny and you're drunk and then you're full of like bad food. You got to separate those vices. Keep them se- separate. Se- separate them up. Yeah, make yeah. them in yeah. uh, t- pick pick two of three. Mm-hmm. You know what? Pick one. Yeah, pick one, <laughs> two of three. Yeah, <laughs> two of three does seem a bit excessive. Yeah, <laughs> um, I worked. I've worked at a couple of chains that you guys have covered on oh, this cool. restaurant, actually, or on this podcast. Yeah, uh, 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 Quiznos was a big. You one. worked at Quiznos. Wow. I did work at Quiznos and Subway. Wow. Um, and Cold Stone Creamery. Wow. Um, was actually I came out because of Cold Stone Creamery. C- Cold Stone Creamery for me was like in my town at least was like the underground railroad for gay teens. Like everyone. Oh really? Just, like, wow. <laughs> because they open and it's not like uh, I moved to New York and quickly found out that Cold Stones are not all created equal. Um, but like when you're in a small suburban Cold Stone, it, mm-hmm. they really do adhere to like every they they didn't have job interviews they like went to the theater programs at the high schools and were like we're holding auditions to work at cold stone uh, oh, and yeah. like that was really appealing to yeah. like loser kids um in my town and so like the three high schools it was just purely staffed by the kids who were in the drama departments at th- the three high schools in my town and so i went and worked there i was still homeschooled when i worked there that was my last oh, job wow. being into homeschool and then after like a summer of working there i was like i need to go to school I need to like do uh, like I need to have like a legit drama program because I was doing like community theater at the time, and then my parents were like, "Sure." And then literally, I went to public school, and within a month, I came out of the closet and smoked weed for the first time and drank for the first time. It was all their fears realized, oh. um, and it all is all thanks to Cold Stone Creamery. That's insane. Yeah. What did you uh- fucking public? Goddamn public yeah. schools. <laughs> it's true what they say. It really, it, they are indoctrinating kids. Uh, <laughs> at least mine was. Is it so like it, you're, you're at Cold Stone. The, this is like, it, it's, it's fascinating to me that you're saying they're holding auditions. Was that because of like, it is kind of a, I, I guess, theatrical performance yeah. thing working there? Was they that really, the, the, they the reason really they had it? wanted to push the like performance aspect. Of Got it. it. Like we, not only would we sing when we, t- when we were tipped, like we would create like group dances and like, like it, we went 
all in. A little too much in, honestly. That, um, sounds, that sounds pretty fun, though, for um, a high school job. Oh, God. It was the best job to have in high school. And then I got fired because I called my manager a bitch. But, you know, that's a different story. <laughs> I didn't realize. Just, she was a 19-year-old Mormon married wow. to a 31-year-old. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Stephanie Hook. I'll use her full name. She was a villain. <laughs> she was a full villain. Um, Nick, did you hear that? Married to a 31-year-old. What is that? What do you? What do you? I'm just saying, it's a 19 year old and a 31 year old. You can get married to someone that age. Yeah, I know that. What are you? Try, what are you implying? Are you married to a 19? No, I have my wife is older than me. She's slight. She's 11 days older than me, implying that I'm fantasizing about having some decade uh, size I was just, age difference. I was just repeating the information to you. Okay? Well, you were emphasizing it That's for fair. me th- as if for my benefit. I think you and I should go to work at Cold Stone because it seems like it's a it, it can awaken the, the your li- like it seems like a life awakening place yeah. in many ways. Mm. Life it would get you out of life affirming. Yeah. The, it, it, it would get us maybe out of this business. And then maybe, it, it was humiliating because I got fired from the Cold Stone and then worked at the Quiznos directly mm. behind the Cold Stone. Wow. Um, which was a real downgrade. So like wow. on the other yeah. like the other side of the block, so basically? So there's a strip mall. Okay. And then there was the, a freestanding Cold Stone like right in the parking lot of, oh, the, Colts, wow. of, of the, the strip mall, basically. And, and I just moved back to... Hmm. The Quiznos before then. A That's an interesting. Fun. I had a freestanding Cold Stone. I feel like I, I haven't know. seen a lot of those. That's an interesting layout. And, uh, well, I guess it was like it was in this. It was like freestanding with one other thing, like a okay. T-Mobile store or something Got it. like that, like a smaller strip mall in front of the bigger strip mall. So a you baby were strip mall. Were you at Quiznos before Subway, and and in yes. your first food service job was was Cold Stone? Uh, no, my first food service job was Dippin' Dots. Oh my mall, god! Which I also got fired from, and then went directly into working at Cold Stone. <laughs> Um, I got fired from a lot of jobs, you guys, <laughs> and not all of them because I was bad. Some of them because I was bad. But the Dippin' Dots was weird. It was a Dippin' Dots Dippin' Dots st- stall in the mall, just a very like four by four square. Right. And they <laughs> fired me because I wasn't doing enough work on the down when there weren't customers. And my question to that is, it's what exactly was I supposed to be doing <laughs> when I wasn't serving Dippin' Dots? Like, yes. she, my, my boss, like, hid out in a in a Verizon store, like, catty corner from the stall mm-hmm. and watched us all day. And apparently, I was the one who did the a least. A spying boss? I know. It was so lame. And I was you like... You got some weird bosses over I, there. I, it's the Midwest. Every boss is weird. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was... Crazy. And then after Quiznos Subway, I worked at Family Video, which is a video rental store. No food. Hey, I, I got to say, you sing, you sang at Cold Stone. Then you went and worked at the famously Toasties Quizno. Sounds like a song of ice and fire, Nick. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, Jesus. This, is, this took a turn. <laughs> this took a real turn. A song singing at mm-hmm. Cold Stone of ice, Cold Stone. And fire. No, I we got it. Yeah. We it was pretty like on paper it reads. It's just not <laughs> I, think, I, I think that's how uh, a young George R. R. Martin <laughs> conceived his series. <laughs> and you conveniently Mitch, you look like a young George R. R. Martin. The fuck? <laughs> a Jar Jar. I like Jar Jar R. Martin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that we should work at Cold Stone. Yes. Figure out our life path. Get out of uh, get out of comedy. Yeah, I'm down for that. Yeah, I don't know if Cold Stone is necessarily the. I mean, maybe that is the the catalyst. great maybe performance that is what I need to do. opportunities at Cold Stone. Mm, yeah, I'm you know what? Like, we 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 went recently. Well, you know, Nick Rutherford, uh, which was maybe the will be the what about our most recent episode? Most yes. re- recent episode. He also worked at at Cold Stone, and he he too loved it. Every, I feel like everyone who works there loves it. We went though. He, he, he like met his girlfriend there. He met his girlfriend oh, there. He said he, he yeah. said he, that he like really came out of his shell when he was working there. Um, everybody's coming out of the cold stone, a different thing, <laughs> <laughs> but we went and they don't really sing anymore. Yeah. It's a well, I think now. it's, I think it's, it's I, I actually think it's because we're in cities and adults are working there because there are no employment opportunities, but mm-hmm. you go to a, a suburb where like teens are still working at them. And I think it probably is still like a, like that vibe. At least right the last on. time I went home, it is. But like once you have full grown adults who are, are working there because you know, the economy it's not it's a less yeah. um light and um, fancy free and then you don't want to make them sing no yeah, yeah. no god no yeah. like i would go to one i went to one once in new york city and like near times square and it was just it was so sad it was like going to a women's prison it was not oh, boy. a good experience oh man 
yeah, yeah. that's a bummer i i yeah it, it is because like that is like it, it's supposed to have this sort of joyful vibe and then when you have people who don't really want to be there which is understandable um yeah that 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 kind of removes that element but so well, let, let's talk about quiznos and subway real quick because i'm 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 interested in the the, com- the compare and contrast between the two mm-hmm. which one did you like more and and do you have like are these still places Ooh, you question. will you will go eat at after your experience um, working there i liked working at quiznos better I th- still eat at Subway all the fucking time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually... It's convenient, man. It's convenient. Yeah, it is I ate Subway so much in Melbourne. I was so embarrassed. I did it in secret when I was alone because I didn't need anyone else to know that I flew halfway across the world to eat at fucking <laughs> Subway. <laughs> but like, I have a very specific diet and like Subway happens to fit within those dietary needs sometimes. Yeah. And it was just nice what, to... What's your, what's your go-to? At the um, subway. Chicken. Just yeah. like chicken. But I, I prefer an Italian sub. Yeah. If, I, if I'm if I'm really splurging, I the love it. The Italian, Italian sub is not bad. It's I not know, a bad But it's like, a, it's all right. a, like a conservatively 17 times the amount of sodium a human being needs yes. uh, right. yeah. in one day. Yeah. Uh, which is the problem with all fast food. But I, oh, I fucking love... Uh, good and then at, once they once subway started toasting subs it's like why do we need any quiznos anymore they really mm-hmm. like they because quiznos was really pushing that toaster mm-hmm. oven and then like you, like within a year they had toasters at every subway and that, that was like they 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 quiznos thought they had their ace in the hole and then subway was like we got toasters yeah now. it's fine you think you don't have a patent on on toasters yeah it was like a it was like a horse's tail batting away a fly it was it, just it was an incredible display of strength and you know quiznos had that little rat creature as a mascot Scott was oh, kind of right. Con- it was kind of confusing. I it was forgot weird. about that. And then Subway, of course, had the wonderful Jared, the oh. uh, the siren. He was Boy, the siren man. song that pulled people into. Oh. You have not, you have not kept up with oh, the news. No, no, <laughs> you no. are not aware of what's gone oh, on. No. I accused Jared of being what he was before he before it was clear what he was. I always thought he was a creep. I, I, this you is just true. suspected he was a creepy, weird guy. Yeah, yeah. I never liked Maybe him. Maybe didn't know, didn't specifically know what. Yeah, his... who walks to Subway every day? <laughs> <laughs> you know what he was to me as a big guy. Yeah, it was like one of those fake fat. Like it was like one of those like I was like looking at him. I was just like, you look like putty. It doesn't. It doesn't look like you did. Like like it, you're reaping all the benefits of losing this weight. Which look, it was an accomplishment to anyone who's lost weight out there, and obviously, there, but it just there was something that seemed unhealthy about him. It, it seemed like a he seemed like a shortcut man. He lost a lot of weight, but maybe hadn't done the full body transformation to the point where you're like, oh wow, that guy looks great. There was, was something like, about him. Oh, I just want to punch better. the guy in the fucking face, and right. it turned out I was right. He, he sucks. Mm. And also, he was the mascot of Sub. He, I mean, he was basically the mascot of Subway. They put so much of their brand so on long. his shoulders. Oh, yeah, they really yes. did. Like 20 years, they were like, this is our guy. You gotta it's, diversify, yeah. Subway. It's, it's funny, because I feel like if Quiznos had made it, like Subway started toasting, Quiznos went away. Basically, right? I think I feel like that's it still kind of exists, what but it's it's receded a lot. I I mean, I saw like in kind of the for me, it was just such a fuck you is that they they're a Quiznos in uh in Santa Monica got turned into a subway, Ooh, wow, and that that's was such nice. just like like you know like we destroyed we destroyed I, yeah. and this is actually this is almost more problematic than eating at Subway more, but my favorite sub chain because I fucking love a sub is. Jimmy John's. I so. like I like Jimmy, Jimmy John's, John's is food. so good. And, yeah. and yeah. talk about a villain. The man right. who owns Jimmy John's is like yeah. aggressively like and he knows it and he loves it. Yeah. 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 Um, not a good man. Not a good man at all. But you know what? There is no ethical consumption under capitalism. I'm sorry. That's true. No. <laughs> um, and I but oh God, I, I love and the thing is, is where I went to school, there were three restaurant restaurants, quote unquote, that you could go to and use your meal plan at mm-hmm. that were like basically on campus, but slightly off. And that was a Quiznos, a Subway, and a Jimmy John's. Yes. <laughs> so we were well fed with subs. Oh, but you know what we ha- you guys have out here that we didn't have when I was growing up that I actually have fallen in love with a little bit. It's near my apartment is Jersey Mike's. Yeah, Jersey I Mike's. I think Jersey, Jersey Mike's. Mike's is pretty good. Of all of the of all of like the big cha- like I don't I don't like Jimmy John's. I should have made that clear. Whoa. I, I, I don't like it. They, I mean the the added fact of that guy being a piece of shit doesn't help. I'll choose Subway. I guess over all of them. I haven't had Quiznos and over a decade there's no reason to go anymore yeah there's no. not a lot of they still ex- they're still going strong in the midwest whenever okay. i am like touring in the midwest i see a lot of quiznos right but we don't have a lot we don't have like pot belly and a few other things that like some oh pot belly is good too yeah yeah but i feel like i feel like jersey mike's is probably the best 
non like local sub yeah. chain that we have out here, right? I think it's up there. I like here's what I like about Jersey Mike's. Mm-hmm. I, I think their sandwiches are pretty good, but I also like that you can get that sub in a tub. And I feel what? like that's like like yeah, it's it's like the only I feel like sandwich chain that offers a, a legit kind of low carb, no bread option, oh, which okay. is they just give you all the fixins basically as a salad in a in a bowl. Do you know what I do? I order a regular sub. I eat it in my tub. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be back with more Doughboys. Welcome back to Doughboys. We're here with Joel Kim Booster, who worked at the Olive Garden this week's I chain did. for two whole years. Two years. Yeah. Wow. wow. So what? It, th- this is this is. It, it sounds like you had a series of food industry jobs. And was this your first? Uh, what what exactly were you doing there? Were you a host? Were you? A waiter? I was a waiter. Yeah, it was my first and only waiting job. Wow, that I've ever had. So what about the? Because I, I know this is a this is a chain you you wanted to discuss, and I imagine you have some. Uh, uh, affection for it still oh yeah i do well because first of all it was growing up in my life was considered the fanciest restaurant my family could go to like right. i remember it was always an event going <laughs> yes. to the olive garden um like no other and it wasn't even something like if you asked to go on your birthday sometimes they'd be like we just can't that's like that's like a twice a year event for my family so i i grew up like uh, loving it thinking it was the pinnacle and then um as i got older it was still like cool to go to and mm-hmm. then in college i remember when they opened the olive garden in my college town i went to school in central illinois it there was like a line around the building to get wow. into the olive garden that's that's just more a comment on the kind of town that i went to school in um <laughs> But yeah, it was huge. And then, you know, it, it was just like, I knew, I ended up knowing a bunch of people who worked it because I got fired from the family video. <laughs> because after you know four years, I got fired. I'm starting to think uh, that, that's, that that's I'm a bad these, employee. Yeah, you're a bad employee. <laughs> <laughs> no, every single time I've been fired, it's been for bullshit. But um, <laughs> literally, I've worked at the family video for four years and I got fired for renting uh, Rachel getting married without paying for it, even though this is something that every employee oh, at the family video did. It was a yeah. dollar rental, mm-hmm. and I worked with this fucking like late, like, this fucking loser one night, and he saw me doing it, and he Mormon, uh, he might have been honestly, he was just like a fucking mouth breather, and then he told on me, and I got fired for it, and he was like, and he text, he had the nerve to text me after I got fired and be like, I can't believe you would put me in that position. To wow. either have to, what a heat art. To, to lie for you or to to tell, and I was like, lie for me? What the yeah, fuck are you talking crazy. about? You just keep your mouth shut like every other employee at the Family Video did for four years. Who yeah. gives a shit for a dollar? But I That's still have crazy. that copy of Rachel getting married, and I love it. So. Do you uh, <laughs> do you want to shout out his full name as well? I, I wish I could remember because oh, I okay. would. I definitely would. I'm not doing this because I respect. Just him. shut out that's just my bad memory. <laughs> shut out that girl's name again. <laughs> Wait, which one? The the bad. Oh, box. Stephanie Hook. Yeah, Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie Joe Hook. So the you work at Family Video. You oh, get terminated then, there, and then you end up at the Olive I Garden. I rolled right over again. But right directly behind the family video to the Olive Garden. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. That's insane. Um, yeah, I had to wait on my old bosses a lot at the Olive Garden. Too, oh, man. Which was always very awkward, but never did anything to their food. You'll all be happy to know. We don't really do that a lot. Or we didn't at this location. Do you know what? I I've a, heard I that. Had, yeah, I've heard that doesn't actually happen much in, re- in food service. I had a bad taco. I had a bad Taco Bell experience the other night. The, the, just the, the, like, I guess this is a week or so ago. And should have, I, been, should have gone to Del Taco. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, ordered, I ordered, t- like, I think I ordered, like, two burritos and a cheesy gordita crunch. The mm. cheesy gordita crunch is the thing I said last. I very specifically said it because I said it twice. Get up to the window. They, I looked at my receipt, and it wasn't on the receipt. And I said, hey, you, there's no cheesy gordita crunch on there. He said, oh, you didn't say it. And I said, yeah, Ooh. yes, I did. And I said, can you add it? And he said, you got to go around again. No. He told me I had to go around That's again. That's insane. And I was like, what? But I, I was like, I said it. And, and like, I, like, I was like, but I, I asked for it, though. And I was like, come on, man. I'm not a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Pathetically. I was like, I'm not a bad guy. I, I, like, I was like, I, I, I asked for it. And he's like, I would, but my boss, he's like, you, you got you to go around. And so, like one, I, I believe him. By the way, I think that probably yeah. his boss was being an asshole and over his shoulder. Well, that's when I when I came back to the yeah. window again. I said, "You see, you seem like a good guy," and, and I said, "But your boss might be an asshole." Like, because I because I did I went I went around mm-hmm. because I didn't I right because I, I, I want that was when the you whole got reason the I went. cheesy gordita crunch. You gotta have it. You gotta have yeah. the cheesy gordita crunch. That's that's what I mean. I shouldn't be eating it at all. Right. 
Um, Nobody should be eating the cheese from Taco Bell, just mm-hmm. in general. But yeah, but yeah, you know, Joel actually mentioned try Del Taco. I went to Del Taco last night. Had a similar situation. I had a buy one get one free half pound bean and cheese burrito coupon, and I from said a Lakers it, game. No, it's not from a Lakers game. This was okay. from I just got it in the mail. Um, and uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Like, we got a coupon in the mail. I was very excited to use it. Like, like I, we got it that day, I and then I was agree. like, I got to use this tonight. Uh, so I went over there, and I, I ordered. Yeah, I just I'd already had dinner, so I'm like, I'll just get a little bit. So I got uh, I got this buy one get one free bean and cheese burrito, and I got one Del Taco. And then I got up there, and he had it. He was like, he was like, okay, one bean and cheese burrito and one Del Taco. And then I handed him the coupon. He's like, oh, I didn't hear you had the coupon. I thought you just wanted one. Fixed it right there for me. Wow! Yeah, fix on the spot. No, no problem at all. Didn't have to do a lap of the drive through. Uh, maybe I'll knock yeah, a half. Sounds a like Taco Bell just lost a customer. <laughs> <laughs> I will never. I'll always go there. But it did. It was. It was. You know that it was. It's usually been a pretty good Taco Bell, but their service in the last few months has not been as good. So. Yeah, that's a bummer. I do. I love Taco Bell. I love a burrito that melts in your mouth mm-hmm. uh, in a way that food shouldn't. <laughs> 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 but I, I was afraid. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't. I I also went back around and did what they said, and I didn't think that I was that bad. But when I was at the window first, I was like, "What, really?" Like I yeah. did, because you, I that's the right way to react, yeah. right? Oh, to be like, "What were you talking about?" Right. I was confused. It was somehow. reasonable, and also too that boss was wrong because from a customer service standpoint, they should have just accommodated you. Yeah, like making you like like enforcing that rule is going to drive customers. Were, were there a bunch of people behind you? There, I then had to wait like ten minutes. Oh, yeah, that okay. sucks. I get. I and there was a. There was also, there was a cockroach I saw when I was in line oh, outside the building. Wow. Maybe he was oh, lost. Okay, outside. <laughs> I I get it a little bit more. If if there was no one behind you, imagine. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll just draw, I'll see you in two seconds. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Which I, I when I did go back to the window, I was like. Hi, uh, cheesy gordita crunch. It's me. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> it's me. I, I don't know it was me. But yeah, I th- I think a lot of people fear that that something like so it's good to hear that it doesn't happen i mean also don't like don't ever be an asshole i guess is a, yeah. good, a good a good rule yeah. right be nice because also too that's the other thing i think about service workers is like you never know when someone someone's just having a bad day even if you're not getting great service or maybe mm-hmm. it's maybe it's not in their hands i don't know i think you might as well be uh, polite to everybody uh, sorry to keep talking about my trip to australia but i will say <laughs> that even like because they pay their sur- everyone a living wage over yeah. there and there is no tipping and that's not a part of their culture i weirdly felt safer with the wait staff when we when, when things would get dicey with oh, them because it's like they don't give a shit right because the reason it happens over here when it do- or whenever i was tempted is just because the power dynamic is so shifted like disproportionately like yeah. you you can't do anything because your entire paycheck is in their hands and so like you do shit like that because it's your only recourse really right. you know you're but, paying less you're paying you're getting paid less than minimum wage and if you're yeah. rude back to these people who are being rude to you they're going to not tip right. you and then that's then whereas in Australia they're all just rude back right because <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't give a shit they're yeah. like, and they're not going to fuck with your food because they're like what does it matter to me I've just you know was rude anyways yeah so. that's interesting I mean that, yeah that would be I think they I think I'm I mean because tipping exists now I think you should you should tip yeah. well and tip generously especially because you know the cost of living in, in uh, a lot of places Any has city. gone up so high but uh, the but yeah it'd be it'd be great if tipping went away it I, was done away with I dated this British guy in New York for a while who knew knew about tipping knew that it was a thing and i remember we would get in fights about this all the time because he was like it's not my responsibility to make sure that these people are getting a living wage and i was like no absolutely i agree with you it's not it shouldn't be our responsibility but not tipping them doesn't help them in the meantime like how do you go from like a to c there like uh, that's such a weird way of thinking every time it was his turn to pay i'd have to bring cash and like sneak the waitress's cash yeah out of shame that's great in the bathroom which is like why am i doing this there yeah. was, it's funny in our lifetime. I think the the appropriate tipping has gone from fifteen to twenty percent. Yeah, right. Well, don't you think it was um, fifteen no. percent at it, one time? It, it went. It's changing in my dad's lifetime too. Because I remember yeah. when I was working in Olive Garden, and I'd come home and I'd complain about people who would tip fifteen percent. My dad would be like, "That's over tipping," and I was yeah. like, "Oh no!" That's, 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 that's specifically what I was. I think it was like. My mom and dad, I feel like when I was a kid, it would be 50, like they would tip 15%. And then if it was really good, 20%. Right. Yeah. And now I feel like 20% is the standard. It feels standard. pretty standard. I, yeah. I won't, eat, no matter how shitty it is, I will tip 20%. Unless it's like something so bad, I'm willing to talk to the manager about it. Like it, yeah. it'd have to be truly egregious because like my thing is, is especially after serving, it's like uh, we all have 
bad days. And it's also like, no matter how shitty this experience was, their life is infinitely shittier being a waiter. So For sure. just yeah. tip them 20%. What does it matter? Well, like, I, I was also going to say, and, and you can get, you can get into this a little bit. I, I first, I'm going to say this. I didn't, we didn't have a lot of olive gardens. Emma, I don't know if you'll agree with this. It's just in new wing. I feel like there aren't a ton in new England. There was one that was like 45 minutes from my house. That was it. 40, yeah, forty-five minutes yeah. from your house. Yeah, there, 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 there just weren't a ton. It's kind of like Red Lobster, not a ton of Red Lobsters. I don't know if that's same, just, same company. Same yeah, yeah, company. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And I don't, I don't know if that. Yeah, maybe, maybe because they're the same company, or, or if it is. A Did thing. you have Ruby Tuesdays? No, no, really, no Ruby Tuesdays. Yeah, either. maybe it's just Darden doesn't it, have a. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it started in the South. I know that the the first the first uh, Olive Garden in Orlando, and it was. Because, you know, Darden had Red Darden, which was part of General Mills, had Red Lobster first and basically mm-hmm. came up with the idea of Olive Garden as a con of like from whole cloth. They were like, this is going to be an, a nationwide Italian chain. Yeah. And so my guess is I don't know if it's if it's, it could partly be that they just don't have much of a regional presence in New England because because there aren't many Red Lobsters up there either. Right. No. But I would guess there's also a bit of an overlap of like they have good seafood in New England and they oh, have a native yeah. Italian yes. population yeah, there. That's and that's that's, population. That's, so that was that was my guess of why. It right. Happen, but also yeah, why, would, why the fuck would you go to Red Lobster in New England? Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or even honestly, even I mean, Olive Garden, that was the issue. So when yeah. I did have Olive Garden, no, I think you could still. I'm. It's not Italian food. It's something different. And yeah, you know, some might say better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm curious a bit about you. Uh, you working there? Did you have any like? Was was there anything you ever observed in terms of people abusing the never ending pasta bowl, the never ending oh, breadsticks? Yeah, I mean, my thing was is. We were in a town that was like a very working class town. Okay. And so there was just so much gaming of the system (laughs) in terms of that. Like people would be like, I, they would just get one meal and then split the meal. And then because, and then technically you're supposed to be, there's all these rules about the salad, like how much salad you bring for two people versus how much salad Mm -hmm. you bring for four, which makes sense. And like how many breadsticks you're allowed to bring. And like, it, you were so like forced to enforce these rules on people who were gaming and be like, I'm so sorry, I can't bring you out another bowl for the salad because they're the only person who got a meal with salad and like oh, wow. people wanting to do all sorts of stuff. But I mean, the 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 thing, and I don't know if you guys waited tables, but you're I never only did, allowed no. most sections in when you have a when you're a waiter. So I hear again, I've only waited tables at Olive Garden, but I have friends who are waiters who, who have like, you know, seven tables at a time mm-hmm. or more seven. Plus that's, that, that, that's, more. That, that's what I was going to say with, as far as the tipping, that's what was going to lead into it is like Olive Garden seems like its own crazy. Yeah. Beast you, you were only allowed three tables at a time at all. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. maybe four if you were really, really good because it mm. is such a fucking hassle to constantly be refilling everybody's yes. breadsticks yeah. and salads and all of that stuff that it's such a production. It, it, what do you, Honestly, would, it feel, would it feel like very, very busy just with oh, three or yeah. four tables? I mean, I would, fu- I would constantly feel in the weeds with just three tables. That's yeah. crazy. Because people's demands, and most people would come specifically because they'd want to get, they'd want to clear three bowls of salad but and like, you know, 18 breadsticks before they even got to their meal, which they'd, they'd box up and then take home and eat again, which right. I fully respect. But it, it was just like, it, honestly, I, I, I'm a bit, I played a lot, I, less so now, but I played a lot of video games when I was growing up and in college. Yeah. And it, that is how you'd have to like do your mindset of like any game where it's like task management, mm-hmm. where you're like paying attention to many things at once and just like doing it. If you got in the groove, it was actually like very Zen, of right? Just like yeah. refilling this and then going back and forth and, chewing on a breadstick. Oh, I hate to tell you guys, but those breadsticks are 350 calories per stick. Whoa. Wow. Isn't that insane? And That's I didn't, a lot. I didn't find that out until after I worked there and I would eat literally like 11 of them a shift <laughs> and then I would eat a shift meal afterwards. <laughs> Holy like shit. I, but when I graduated college, I w- obviously was the happiest I've ever been because I was just drinking a bottle of red wine a night and eating at Olive Garden four times <laughs> like that. Like It was insane. 350 calories. I know you, you don't crazy. know how it happens, but it's because it's the densest, fakest carb ever. Yeah. And then you, they pile it full of butter on top as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it was just... Oh, and then what? do they put cheese so or salt on top of it? Salt. What? Salt. salt yeah. oh, okay. I will say... Man. I like those breadsticks. Oh, they're so good. They're really, really... I mean, they're so they're simple. They're good, but they but are good. shitty. It I is, mean, right. like, you can tell that they're not good, too. I, I right. definitely know... Like, the when texture I, of it is yeah. not yes. like a real bread. Yes, yeah, it, yes. Like that's, you were saying, yeah, it's like it's like a... It's, it's like a fake carb or however you put it. It's, it's so like... 
it's so manufactured mm-hmm. and processed. And Which, I like it, last night. It, I just want to say it's funny yes. to me though that it, it, like it does taste like a fake bread because I'm like. Bread seems like an easy thing to get, like like a normal yeah. tasting <laughs> bread. <laughs> it's not that hard, but the, you had we had to make. You, they had to be so quick to make, yeah, because they. Oh, yeah. oh that makes. We sense. go through so many of them, and that's the other reason you only have three tables is because like uh, you, you one person will be put in charge of making sure that there are more breadsticks. Oh, like wow. one waiter has to like be constantly like putting them into the specially made oven specifically for cooking the fake carb, and <laughs> and like and another person is in charge of like pre-making the salads and making sure there are enough salads like sitting out so you can just go back and grab one and shit like that and then you know you're expected to like expo other people's food and stuff right but you're not getting paid extra for that so how much yeah so you got all this side work but but about the breadsticks specifically how are they arriving at the olive garden just in a big garbage bag basically really <laughs> just like a are giant they frozen clear yeah frozen bag of breadsticks and then you're just basically i mean it sounds similar to what, what subway does with their loaves yeah no it's it's pretty yeah it's pretty much the same deal um and they yeah you spread some butter on them throw them in this special oven that cooks them for the exact amount of time at the right temperature and and then you're off to the races that's great that's crazy that's yeah. bananas and you grab one dip it in ranch Take a bite, put it in your apron, and then go out. <laughs> to, to work. That brought, that is good fuel. I feel like that's good fuel yeah, food yeah. if you're working a shift. Boy, dip it in ranch. I wish I thought of that. Oh yeah, I I just I'm thinking about it now, and I really want to, but I don't think I can go back to that life. <laughs> Why are you didn't have any pocket ranch on you? <laughs> I'm carrying around loose ranch. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I would eat there. I would work there like four or five times a week in college, and I would eat there every day, and I still could eat there that many times. Wow. Be sick of it. I would make so many people go with me in New York to the Olive Garden that it was embarrassing <laughs> for many people. Well, now I would do it less because they closed the one in Chelsea, and now only Times Square exists. Oh, that's good. And, oh, the, and the shitty thing about it is that they raised the, the one in Times Square. The prices are more expensive than the one in Chelsea was, which totally defeats the purpose of going to the Olive Garden. Yeah, like right. If you're going to go in a place like New York, it's like, oh, it's shitty, but it's at least cheaper. It's like a Friday's prices. And then when everything is jacked up so that it's like $40 a plate, you're like, wait, this is a joke that we've played on ourselves. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not fun. <laughs> I, I will say that our server last night was concerned about her taking too much time. She was remember she kept apologizing to us. It was like, very expedient service. And yeah, it, and made, I, didn't, I didn't feel like it was that. Yeah, it, yeah, but she was very apologetic and was just like one to make like, like it was actually kind of crazy because we put we put in an app and the app we got was the loaded pasta chips. Was that something that that existed? No. Yeah, I think it's a newer newer is offering. That, is that just like jank nachos? It really is just a janky nachos. It's basically that. Yeah, and 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 I, I would say that the you know I, we we can get into our food in a second, Mitch. But but we'd ordered those and like less than I feel like ninety seconds later she it came was back so fucking so fast. fast. But she like can't, she was like she was like oh those haven't come out yet. Oh boy, I'll go check on it. And then th- they came out like within like another two minutes. It Which was, like, her saying so they fast. haven't come out yet was insane. Anyway, right? And we then, were like, what is she talking about? And we then it arrives. Just order them. It arrives so quickly that I was like, this is it's unnerving. Well, yeah. and I think part of that is because again, like the three table stuff, the only way to make money at Olive Garden is turnaround. Like, Got you it. have to flip tables constantly, otherwise mm-hmm. you will not walk out of there with any money and every almost every menu item at olive garden is designed to be made in less than 10 minutes except for the steaks oh man that's crazy everything could come out in 10 minutes if you didn't course it out correctly that was the other big thing is because of the fucking salad and breadsticks you had to be so careful about how you'd have to like guess how cheap a person was how much Mm. fucking salad they eat because you'd have to course everything out to exactly the right time otherwise like if they if your if their meal came out before they had had their second bowl of salad, they, mm-hmm. people would be furious. <laughs> wow, that's that. that it, it 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 feels too fast. Yes, that was like an issue. Like I wish that they had taken a bit more. But I will also say that it. We went at what five? It was five forty-five. Yeah, we 5:30. went pretty early in the evening. 5.30 on a Monday night. To the Glendale and, location, which I think is a pretty new Olive Garden, actually. Right? Yeah, it's not too old, yeah. but, but there were there were, there were were quite a few people in there already. At a lot five, of families. 5.30 wow. on, a, on a Monday night, mm-hmm. uh, which which was crazy to me. Mitch, uh, can I say something that I found? I was like, I saw it and I was like, oh, that's nice. The, there's a, a, a group, a family of about six next to us with some young kids. Uh-huh. Their food came out. They said a prayer. Oh. I was like, oh, that's nice. Don't push this shit on yeah. me. <laughs> it's very wholesome. Fuck that shit. 
Yeah, I think that's actually awful. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think it's terrible. I think they're pushing their religion onto their children. They didn't have a choice in that. <laughs> right. Maybe some of those kids didn't want to say a prayer. <laughs> and you don't know what God they were praying to either. That's true. And uh, give me a Bart Simpson's grace any uh, any day of the week. <laughs> Rub-a-dub-dub, thanks for the grub level. What, is, what does he say? What is, he says something better than that, obviously. I think it's similar. To that. I've heard that one before. Rub-a-dub-dub. And I guarantee you mm-hmm. that that prayer was just as much for you as it was for God. <laughs> it was theater. It was theater. They wanted people to the, see them doing it. The that. Doughboys are here. Well, let's say a prayer in front of them. <laughs> huh? Um, it, it was, it was, there were, there were some nice families in there when we yeah. were there. It's and you and I family. We Gosh. ruined, we ruined many experiences. I feel like <laughs> by being there. Um, Wait, explain the past to not. Okay. So here's, here's the, we'll, 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 let's get into our meals. And I, I'm curious about what you yeah. had on your trip as well, Joel. So we, we got the, I started off with the, uh, the Milan Mai Tai, which is Malibu rum, grenadine and amaretto liqueur, uh, with pineapple juice and sour oh mix. My God. Did you ever make any of the fan, the fruit <laughs> cocktails? There? Um, I definitely would drink like some, we would also, our big thing was we would pour, um, and this is a different time. I would not do this now. Yeah. We would fill a to go cup with, um, Moscato and then just like a little, pinch of like uh raspberry lemonade and then off you go that sounds <laughs> to the night um that was the that was what everybody did there um yeah, i would definitely take some of those drinks not i don't think the milan mai tai uh was something that i personally partook in but man i used to love those f- the more ingredients it used to be it would be like yes this means it's better and now it's like i can't do anything beyond like a whiskey and one mixer. Right. Really. Or like a Negroni is like as many ingredients as I think I can handle in a drink now. Those did, chain did you, restaurant, did, go for it. I was just going to say, did you ever bring any like breadsticks to like a college party or anything oh, like co- that? My roommates loved me because I would just constantly be bringing home bread, like bags and bags of breadsticks yeah. and other miscellaneous foods. My friend Randy worked at a pizza place in Ithaca and he came home one night with like a backpack full of pizza. And it maybe is maybe my highlight from college, just opening up that backpack and getting into like, like twenty slices of pizza. My my lesbian aunt Tam, who lived in our basement for many years, worked at McDonald's, and they would just throw out certain foods or that they were saving that didn't get eaten. Mm -hmm. So there was like a year when I was like nine, where our outside our garage fridge was full (laughs) freezer was full of McDonald's breakfast. (laughs) Wow! Full. What a fucking dream. Yeah, that's amazing. Just to have like a freezer full of breakfast burritos and egg McMuffins. Like it was the best. You're 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 a hero. You and Randy. That those 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 that those are that's a hero level in college to be able to bring home food like that. Yeah. Yeah. I had a guy. I mentioned. I think I may have told the story on this show before, but I. There was a, uh, a a friend at high school who worked in a movie theater, and he came in once with just a like a lawn size garbage bag just full of movie hot dogs, <laughs> <laughs> and people were like, kids were like eating them, and I was like, I'm not gonna eat one of these room temp hot dogs. Oh, you fucking snooty piece of shit! No, yeah. that's where I that's where I draw the line. Uh, but so the, the Malibu Ram Mai Tai was. Very, these chain restaurant cocktails are so sweet. It, it was yeah, very, very sweet. I thought it was sugar. it was kind of nice, but I couldn't finish it. I, I had a few sips, and uh, you know, it's it, it was just a little a little too uh, d- a little too sweet and a little too juicy for me. The loaded pasta chips, which you were asking about, homemade pasta chips with uh, layered with Italian cheeses and a hearty meat sauce topped with cherry peppers and an Alfredo drizzle. The cherry peppers, Mitch, were absent. They were absent. <gasps> and the, the chips, I think, were just so stale. Joel, like they, these, these, they were terrible. This, this was a... Uh, was it real low light? This, what are pasta chips? Uh, as far as we could tell, it's like, it's like uncooked pasta. That's what it, that's what it <laughs> that's, seemed like. It was really that's bad. That's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> that, that were in the shape of chips. If they were... They were, they were that's was a, really such bad. A, a horrendous idea. I, who <laughs> thought of that? I, I have no the idea. The chefs in fucking Roma, Italy or wherever or who are making all the recipes for Olive Garden should be ashamed of themselves. This was a miscalculation. These, this was the worst thing I had. Which, by the way, when I was trained, they they told us that that was real. You no, they actually have that ch- that kitchen? That kitchen in Italy. And my our trainer, Julie, who was just the biggest fucking nerd. Who, and I was like, Julie, it's not real, right? And she's like, no, I've been there. And wow. I was like, you absolutely have not been to the Olive Garden like <laughs> recipe kitchen in fucking Italy. It just Ooh. it doesn't exist. Doughboy strip. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I might go to Italy this summer. A bunch of Quincy f- you folk gotta, are going to Please ask her. around. Please uh, just beg people on the streets. I know it's here. I, w- I would love to find the Olive Garden main kitchen. I wonder if it would be 
if like we would get the shitty pasta chips that we got in that in the they, these things were like they were fucking bad you gotta go to italy and at every restaurant be like do you have pasta chips <laughs> <laughs> you know pasta for chips authentic pasta chips pasta, i just wanted some pasta nachos it, it, and like I mean, you you, you kind of pointed this out, Nick, but there was chicken in it. There, there wasn't supposed to be chicken there, in it. It was weird. what? Yeah. Oh, it, there was not supposed to be. chicken It wasn't in it? listed on the menu. Description. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, there was like yeah, extra superfluous chicken. I think someone. I think it was maybe a newish thing that they didn't quite know how to make. Weiger. It was rarely ordered. It I didn't was a total. That. That's fucking disgusting. It was a total myth. It doesn't sound like rocket science to make. To be honest. <laughs> right. It Put some like bolognese nachos. on some pasta. Honestly, chips. like a nacho that is like. Like a bolognese based nacho doesn't sound bad to me. It, it seems like paper. it could work. I think they were yeah. just very With resi- Italian cheeses. Exactly. I think they were just very resistant to using tortilla chips, which would have mm-hmm. just made it better. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, Mitch, what was it? Tell, walk us through your cocktail real quick. I, it was a mute. Now I forget the name. I, you know what? I thought you would know it. <laughs> it's probably a. It was probably. It was some sort of. It was probably. It may have just been a Milan mule. It was just they just changed Moscow <laughs> to an Italian city, God. right? It was. It, it, no, I don't think it was a Milan. Yeah, you're. I mean, that's a, they, a Tuscan like, mule. It was like a like a. There was like. Wasn't there like lemon limoncello in it or whatever? Am I saying that incorrectly? No, no, that's right. right. Um, there. Uh, hold on. I'll, I'll find out the exact name of it. But what it turned out to be was basically just. Uh, a Moscow mule with a little bit of of raspberry in there. Which, by the way, I'm not. I'm. I haven't been drinking that, at all. That and, sounds right. And, and so this was my. And I actually did enjoy the. I thought the drink was nice. It was kind of like a, a like a Moscow mule with a little bit of raspberry. In there. Right. Yeah. That's not a flavor profile that I'm opposed to. Yeah. Yeah. Was, that sounds fine. It was good. Go so, go on, Nick. I, and I'm then find we, the name of it for our on for my entree. And this is, I assume, something that got ordered pretty frequently. You work there, Joel. The tour of Italy. Mm-hmm. This was our server's recommendation. Mm. She was, again, she was very helpful, very Ew, accommodating. That's what she recommended, though. You know, I think she was looking. I think she was like, <laughs> th- "This happens to me a lot." And 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 my lovely wife Natalie points this out: is that I think people assume I'm a rube. <laughs> like I look, I look like a Mark. You and you so are you are a rube. I am something of a rube. So I like I kind of have that vi- project that vibe of like, okay, this square. Let's get him. You know, let's yeah. let's take care of this. Well, I have to say, like looking regular at your guy. Face. You have the voice of someone who eats a lot of food. You have the face of a picky eater. Mm, um, interesting. You have the face of a person who has a lot of food allergies. So right. I imagine I I can kind of see where she's coming from. Yeah. But I I I'm surprised that she would suggest that. Right. But I, I mean, look I, like I might be finicky. Yeah. You look like you'd be like the kind of person who's like I just like two ingredients in a meal. Got know? it. Like, yeah. That makes sense. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't blame her for make for jumping to that conclusion. But the tour of Italy was her recommendation: three on one plate, chicken parmigiana, a lasagna classico, chicken and fettuccine parmigiana. alfredo. Did I say that wrong? Chick- I, I called chicken parmesan. It had an extra a at the yeah. end, so I pronounced the a. Oh, it's Italian. Oh, all right. What, what what would be the two ingredients that he likes? I feel like one of them is human blood. <laughs> ketchup. <laughs> ketchup. Ketchup and human blood. Uh, I found out the name of my cocktail. It was a raspberry Italian ice mule. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, <laughs> w- not worth it. Yeah. Why that extra ice in there? I don't know. Was it a frozen drink? It, it, no, it was not. No. I, 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 they have the limoncello in there. Is, it, is it limoncello? Is you know that? what I think it is? Italian ice is a dessert. So oh, they want to call it. They want to okay, make it sound yeah, yeah, Italian. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Okay, Again, sense. This, there's such a simple... Uh, solution here. They should have just changed Moscow to an Italian city. It would have been fine. Milan Mule makes more sense yeah. than Milan Mai Tai. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All um, right, look, I'm not here to punch up the names of their menu items. Um, yeah, go on. Should, that, I, should I say what I got? Yes, yeah, go to your entree. I got uh, the giant meatball in Manicotti, uh, which was a giant meatball, which was so much more giant than I ever would have guessed it to be. It was huge. And then... It was like you were eating your own head. <laughs> Jesus. It, it did, I mean, it, 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 was, it, was, it was big. Yeah. And I don't know if it was my head big, because that's insane. But, but, uh, <laughs> the, and then two, and two manicotti underneath that. Uh, that's which, such, a, such a strange combo. Like, it, it really does feel like they just threw a few things at the wall, and we're like, it's going to be giant, like throwing darts. It'll be like a giant... Meatball <laughs> and two manicotti. Okay, that's it. it you know, our our, our server suggest she. I, I pointed out that in the bolognese, and she she suggested the giant meatball. She said that she loved it. It was great. The meatball was, and this is exactly what I was afraid of. I was like, this meatball is giant. It's gonna be like cold mm-hmm. and not Can't fully cook it right. and yeah. not fully cooked. And I got it, and it was so dense, so 
just so dense and so not so not warm and she was like sorry it took a while to like cook your meat she she basically was telling us that, that it took a long time which we didn't think it took that it long it didn't take very long at all to, to, and she was like because of the meatball and then the meatball just was not hot and then the manicotti under it was insanely hot like the hot <laughs> like 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 so hot that it was like i couldn't touch it for a couple oh, minutes. i wish i would have gone with you guys because i think i could have just uh, told you the right things to order yeah she sounds like an idiot <laughs> oh boy <laughs> also apologizing for it taking too long even though it doesn't take too long is a classic like reverse gaslighting uh, yeah. that she is doing to like make you realize that it's all tapping quite quickly and mm. to like think of her better and be like <laughs> oh, she's actually doing a great job none of this is taking a long time that's I think I'm gonna t- steal that trick for the bedroom eh <laughs> Boy, sorry about the delay. <laughs> you can say that to Natalie. Yeah. <laughs> sorry that took too long. Yeah, <laughs> they got other things to do today, huh? <laughs> we we even had sex. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the the tour of Italy, I will say, and I said this to you in the restaurant, Mitch. The lasagna mm-hmm. classico. I feel like if I'd had that as a nine year old boy, that would be my favorite thing mm-hmm. in the world. I was like, this is so like just like a classic generic Italian lasagna. Mm-hmm. It's it's it reminded me a lot of what the, the lasagna they have at Marie Callender's, mm-hmm. which is just like which is not necessarily a recommendation, something in favor of a place that's supposed to be Italian. But I mean, it is sort of like it's just a very classic basic american style lasagna and uh the fettuccine alfredo was my favorite thing on the plate i thought the 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 pasta was not overcooked and uh, you know i think the alfredo sauce that can sometimes be just be so overpowering and it, mm. it was like just you know like a little creamy and that they didn't put on too much of it chicken parmigiana was fine it was just i feel like a little generic nothing nothing too impressive it was, it was very fried i tried you we tried eat some of yeah. each other's meals oh uh, <laughs> no no you're you're right it, <laughs> I, the, for those poor families that saw us feeding each other with our right. plates <laughs> um the and uh, the chicken lady in the tramping a chicken parm <laughs> <laughs> the chicken parm wasn't bad it just yeah. was like very much it was very fried yeah there's and then no the fettuccine alfredo was decent and then the 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 the, the, the lasagna the, and then the lasagna was uh you didn't like it that much so i did like the lasagna i like the fettuccine more but the lasagna i thought was was pretty good yeah I, the, I think the i think the fettuccine was the star and the, the chicken parm was the was in third place getting the bronze i liked my manicotti mm-hmm. i thought it, i thought it was good once it cooled down they were like you know like the edges this is a place that got like what are the there's probably an exact word for it where the where the pasta edges are like pinched mm. you know what i'm talking about where like yeah like a like those Sometimes those would be like very hard and not like it felt like they were overcooked or whatever. If you know what that term is, hashtag pinched edged pasta term. <laughs> nice hashtag. Uh, but the rest of it was was the rest of the manicotti was good. The meatball yeah. though, there was just a there there's was just a, a reason meatballs are the size they are. Right. Yes, like, exactly. And I would have liked it if it was just meatballs and manicotti. Honestly, yeah. I would have been like, oh, okay, that's that's fine. But this there was just this giant fucking he, just this huge shitty meatball sitting on top of Ooh. the manicotti. So it Th- kind of that, bummed me that's out. That's the problem with the Olive Garden is it it loves its gimmicks. Mm. It loves it loves to find a little gimmick like pasta chips or yeah. giant meatball. Yeah. Because it's like anybody can go to a, an Italian restaurant and get meatballs and manicotti, but a giant meatball. Yeah, and it, it just it, it and it's a limit, limited time thing. I've I should have gone with the bolognese, which just seemed kind of like a more straightforward thing that maybe would have been bad too, but at least the, probably would have been cooked at a normal temperature and right. it would have been all right. Yeah. Uh, Mitch, yeah. We, we got a dessert too, but before we get into that, uh, uh, Joel, I want to hear a little bit about your meal. Uh, t- talk um, us through your most recent visit. So I did, I, I postmates Olive Garden myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like fucking Richie Rich. I was like, uh, bring it to me. Um, Cause I, I don't go for the ambiance, although right. I do think I missed it a little bit. I think I, I think miss, it, the decor has not changed in probably twenty years. Frozen in time. I think if you've worked at a restaurant, you 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 are you are fair to give a review on it. Yes, when, whenever. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I have had everything on the menu circa. 2011 probably oh, wow. at that okay. time i have not had the pasta chips or the giant meatball i think i can probably guess as to what the giant meatball tasted like though. Uh-huh, uh, yeah but um not good i got my, the best appetizer on our menu is the on our menu wow, wow. i really <laughs> i really went back to that place i really felt like i was standing next to your table in a black apron just now um i'm starting to think if there was a death at olive garden you would help cover it up. <laughs> I drank the Kool-Aid. Um, <laughs> no, is the lasagna fr- uh, fritters? 
Oh, oh wow. yes. You know, I think we the first visit we had with, with uh, to Olive Garden. I think Nikki. I think we maybe had those. that. Sounds familiar. Yeah. I think we they might have had those. So good. It's literally just the lasagna that you like mm. cut into little pieces and deep fried. I mean, how yeah. can you go wrong? Right. Mm. Um, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, love those. And I got. I ordered that. Um, and then I got my favorite meal on the menu that really brought me back, which is the. Um, Oh fuck! Uh, the braised beef and tortellini. Oh, which is I think the best thing at Olive Garden. Now I feel even because the the it was a braised beef uh, bolognese right. that I didn't get. So now I'm sad because that's it. A, tastes good. it do, is the it to me is the thing that tastes the most uh, like something that is not made at a chain restaurant at that place. It is so good. The the braised beef is like. It doesn't have that like frozen meat quality, even though I know none of it is fresh. They're yeah, not back yeah. there slaughtering uh, meat by any means. Um, but it's just, oh, it's so good. And the sauce is, I don't know what the sauce is mm-hmm. that I I can't get it anywhere else. It doesn't taste like anything else that I've had. I mean, yeah. I'm, I am also a Midwest rube too. Sure. So uh, I'm sure that if I were to give it to someone with a better palate than my own, they'd be like, yeah, that's this sauce. That's, you know, you just have to order it here. But it's so good. My other favorite meal is the uh, steak and gorgonzola. Pasta. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. Little steak medallions. The reverse of the giant meatball with just three tiny little steak medallions. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think better to make things smaller at Olive Garden than, than bigger. They should. Right. Have- I oh my god! I had such a terrible time with the Postmates though. I ordered it, and I ordered. It looked like on the Postmates menu you had to you had to order a to go salad because I really wanted the salad. I mm-hmm. fucking love. We didn't talk about the salad. I think the salad is fucking great. I oh, actually like that. The salads are the salad is salad and breadsticks are for sure like you were saying. There's just a money maker of this place. Yeah, so good. That was a, that was an oversight on our part, not discussing our salad. But yeah, the the mm-hmm. the I we get we got a big bowl of salad. Uh, we we just had the one bowl of salad, but uh, mm-hmm. with the two of That's us. But it's still you know is it it's it's good. I like the dressing a lot. They throw some fresh parmesan on there. It doesn't. And maybe I would think differently now because my my standards for how something is overdressed has changed drastically since I've moved out of the Midwest. But, sure. Um, I didn't ever feel like it was overdressed. No, it's me. not like, it's it not like sopping. Like amount. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's just so good. That salad dressing is, is so good. But so I, I ordered an extra one and then my Postmates texted me and when uh, they text, no. it's never good. And yeah. he was like, um, Hey, this is your driver. I am at the restaurant right now. Do you want utensils? And I was like, yeah, Sure, I'm pretty sure I specified that. Dude, that's a and that's a b- bullet dodge. It feels like yeah. yeah. And then he was like, "Also, your meal comes with a salad, and you ordered another salad. Did you want two salads?" And I was like, "No, I didn't. Thank you for catching that." And he's like, oh, "I'll take care nice. of it for you." And then he was like, "And I'll be." He's like, "I'm going to make sure to put them in two separate bags because I hate when I get a salad that's been sitting in warm food." And I was like, "All right." too much <laughs> listen you are thirsting for this tip in a way that is now crossed a line like and he and i get it like i i wish he wasn't forced into doing this line of work because the way the world works you right. know no yeah, one should I have know. to be a postmates yeah. driver and he doesn't know that i tip 20 percent no matter what you yeah. know like he i'm sure there are people who need this kind of over you know yeah, I, yeah. I don't need to don't don't patronize me with your text messages. Like, just do it. Just separate the salad from the hot food. You don't have to tell me about it. I'll notice it and I'll tip you. Right. Um, but not everyone's like that. So um, no, for sure. I think you can. T- I think you can tell if you have a good Postmates. Yeah. Well, they. I whenever they text me to be like to tell me some uh, like innocuous thing that they've done, and I'm always like, yeah, I get. It. I'm gonna tip you. Don't worry. Like, it's fine. You don't have to tell me. Just like. Uh, <laughs> I will tip you. But so then he's, we have this big long conversation and he's like, okay, I'm on my way. And then like five minutes later, I get the text message from Postmates. It's like, something's happened to your order. We had to cancel. The restaurant had to cancel. This is after 45 minutes already. And I was like, and I sent it a customer service email that was sounded insane because I was like, yeah, this happened and it was after 45 minutes and I had a full conversation with my driver. I don't, I need to know what happened. And they sent me back the, the, the like, standard response where they're like we're sorry this happened here's five dollars and i was like no 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 i like emailed back and i was like i don't want your money i want to know what happened to my food <laughs> for I, closure. I 
It was on the way. Yes. <laughs> he seemed normal. He separated it. Yeah. He put the salad in a separate bag. I just need to know what happened to it. And they're like, we'll look into it and investigate it and make sure this doesn't happen again. And I was like, I don't care if it happens again. I just want to know what happened. It was like three <laughs> separate emails. And then they stopped emailing me back because they're like, this is a crazy person. Wow. <laughs> like we've given him so much money. And I was I like truly didn't want anything but an explanation. <laughs> That's all I wanted. So then I had to reorder again and it, it came no incident but it was so good this, this is a, exactly what i remember this this is the thing that i was uh, i didn't want to bring it up on the podcast but i had ordered postmates for the when we were doing the pizza tournament yes and he got into a car accident <gasps> and it was a similar thing where i couldn't i try to get information and they they just wouldn't really th- so maybe um, they have a thing where they don't they yeah don't i'm sure they stuff. can't well i will say in new york postmates most of them are on bikes yeah a lot of them are on bikes and i used to order Postmates, uh, Popeye. I get real stoned and order Popeyes. Hell yeah, uh, the best chicken chain, like fast food, in my opinion. And I would get a Dr Pepper, and <laughs> almost every single time I would order it, I'd have to order it two or three times because I would get a driver on a bike, <laughs> and you can't you can't bike with a fountain drink. It's tough. You just oh, can't no. do it. It's tough. And so often it would happen, and then sometimes like. Oh God, I just would feel so bad for them because it would be like something happened to your order. Oh my you God. It's so clear that I'll, they just dropped the fucking drink. I'm sure. I, I wonder how many times that happens in uh, just with post. I wonder how much money they burn on that. That's crazy. They yeah. got to start getting their bike riders some drink right. caddies. One oh, time, shit. one time I, I did that exact thing and he was taking such a crazy long time and I was like following his icon around the map and finally he got there and I was like, it took him a lot. It took like an hour and a half. And he was like, oh, well, because of the fountain drink, I had to take the bus. He took oh, two no. buses That's to crazy. deliver to me. Because he was like, yeah, I just like uh, didn't want to ride my bike. And so he like ro- he like s- walked his bike onto a bus oh, with my Popeyes. And I felt I had never felt more guilty for like participating in Nick Nick Nick, Nick doesn't use Postmates. Yeah, I don't use Postmates. I think maybe I have to retire post do I have to yeah. retire it completely? I guess well, I the do. thing is though, so, this is the problem is I ne- I rarely use Postmates in New York except for Popeyes, mm-hmm. which is the only thing I ever use Postmates for because it's fast food and you can't get it anywhere else. Yes. Anywhere else. And but like Seamless and Grubhub is is really good in New York. Like yeah. most restaurants have it. Most restaurants in general in new york have delivery people like even nice ones and in la the delivery game is not strong otherwise it's really hard to find delivery yeah it's it's confusing because you think it would be like new york you think there would be places also that are open late and there isn't a ton of places that Mm -hmm. are open late it's really strange to find pizza at 3 a.m in this city is a nightmare it's hard it's very hard i know it's crazy yeah well, let's uh, let's get to our real quick, Mitch. Let's 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 discuss oh, yes. this black tie moose cake, and oh, then let's get to our final thoughts. So good. I like that. I like that a lot. We ordered off the Ziosk. Do they have the Ziosk where you work there? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The, I find that the Ziosk weird because there's times yeah. when the server themselves like is using the Ziosk, where yeah. I'm like kind of like I don't. And and for people who don't know what the Ziosk is, it's like this tablet on a stand that's on every table that you can use to order appetizers. You can use to pay your check. It's which a is lot convenient. like in an airport. It's a lot airport like in an airport. Those, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and and you can use to order dessert. And, um, and so we, yeah, we ordered off the Ziosk. This is a thing. Our server had to check in with us because they said like, okay, you, she, she was like, you ordered off the Ziosk, the dessert, but it doesn't say what dessert you got. It just says Ziosk mm. dessert, oh. which I was like, that's a flaw in their system that they need to patch out. It was there. another thing too, that the dessert came insane. It came fast. so quickly. Well, but that's because none of them are made. They're all just sitting in they're the They're just fridge. sitting there. Yeah. Okay. Because it, 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 I mean, it was quite good. I think it might've been the, my favorite I'd say, thing. I'd say was, star I, of the meal. Yeah, it was very good. Uh, chocolate cake, uh, dark chocolate cheesecake and custard mousse. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I thought, I thought Oof. that was quite delicious. Mm. And and they had some chocolate chips on the back end of it as kind of like a crust, which were which were really nice. I went to the bathroom. I came back, and you were talking to the Ziyas. <laughs> <laughs> we got to hang out sometime, buddy. Um, I thought you were going to say he was talking to the cake, which is <laughs> no, that's a Mitch move. That's, yeah, that's me. <laughs> uh, well, let's get let's get to our final thoughts on all. Okay. Of, did you have something to say, Mitch? No, no, I I just was going to say star of the meal. Yeah, well, yeah. absolutely. Let's get let's get to our final thoughts on Olive Garden. Uh, so Joel, we'll each go around okay. and we'll sort of give a closing argument, if you will, and then ascribe this chain a rating on the order of zero to five forks. Okay. You're our guest. We will start with you. Great. Um, listen, I think it's really a testament to how good the food is that I worked there for two years, had a terrible experience, worked with a lot of heroin addicts, and yet 
I still would eat there every day mm. if I could. I and I, th- I think I actually have now. They they have a lot of healthy options too. You can make it work for your diet. I, anybody can eat there. When you're there, your family. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt that. I feel that. You know, <laughs> um, I the the people at Olive Garden at any Olive Garden are my chosen family. Um, and I'm gonna give it. You guys don't do half forks, right? You can do oh, half yeah, forks. Yeah, feel free. I'm going to give it four and a half forks. Wow. Very good score. That's a great score. I know. And I know that it, I'm coming in hot with the, the high score. It's my first episode. And like people will probably think that I give everything a high score. And that's simply not the case. I, I think some people, I think this is a very divisive restaurant in some ways. Yeah. And I got to say, sadly, there's no place in my heart for all. <gasps> oh, wow. <laughs> that's my family. <laughs> Yeah, well, I got a question for you. When you're here, your family, my question is, uh, what family? The Manson family? <laughs> Nick, go ahead. You can tell Mitch, them. Mitch tried, uh, Mitch, uh, tried that on me at the restaurant. Uh, <laughs> and, then said, and then I laughed, and he said he was going to say it again on the podcast. <laughs> well, what other family, Nick? The Adams family? Yeah, yeah that's, an, that's an alt. That's an alt you had, uh, <laughs> which also works. I think Madison. I, yeah, I, think I, 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 ain't, I ain't talking John Adams or John Quincy Adams. No, you didn't have to clarify. No, I'm talking, we got it. talking Gomez. Don't, ex- don't explain the joke. <laughs> Cousin it. Not only is he explaining the joke, he's explaining the alt to a joke that he's already said. What family is it? The the, uh, the Bundy family. It can work with with both of them. Right, with Al Ted? or with Ted. Yes, Al, yeah. Al or Ted. Okay. I think Al. It's a little less clear what you're talking. What you mean? Do you want one last one? Yeah. What is it? The Cosby family. Oh, oh boy. What? Oh, okay. Oh. What? That's another bad family. Yeah, I mean, I guess the family has been bad. It's what? weird. Now I'm in trouble. You're, so, you're telling me <laughs> it's this weird. Shit. It's weird that he had a practice in his basement in hindsight, right? <laughs> very, yeah, very oh, yeah, strange. Yes. Every yeah. uh, every element about that is very strange. Yeah. The the, the you fictional know. reality. It's um, like mm, yeah. He's a bad guy. I shouldn't have brought him up. <laughs> Put bring bring the down the, the vibe in the room <laughs> yeah. at the very end. Charles Manson was fine, but yeah. how dare you bring up Bill Cosby? <laughs> yeah, look. What is it? The the freaking Manson family is what I <laughs> want to say. Go. The freaking Mansons run that place because... The, what, what they what they what they give you sometimes should be against the law. It I is say your fault that you ordered a fucking giant meatball. <laughs> the meatball was cold too dense it tasted meat loafy it was not good gets points for the the dessert was great i i finished weiger had just a few bites i finished that thing because it was the most satisfying mm. thing of all the manicotti was pretty good look the money make when it comes to the meatballs i say take the rule of honey i shrunk the kids the original is good shrink things down oh, okay got don't it, got blow it, got them up it. yeah you know yeah, what i'm saying right i was about to be like trying to think of what the rule was <laughs> that movie is but anyways i mean eating there i just wondered if it was the manson family they were referring to. <laughs> um, the third time it really lost its luster <laughs> first two i was on board for because look the food it just the the salad and breadsticks are, are where it's at that is that is that's that's what that's what people want out of that place and i get it and they're both good and they both do their thing, and and they're good. Just the entrees are 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 not that great. The cocktail was okay. Uh-huh. The dessert was great, but man, I <sighs> I think you both got sh- shitty entrees. We, out we of did. Everything. We did. We did. That menu is huge. Right. It's hard for here's here's what I'm gonna say because a three four, three fork rating is good, and it's hard for me to give it three forks. Wow. I have a hard time giving it three forks. That's fine. But I also feel I also feel like it's not a two and a half fork place. Right. So I'm going to give it 2.9 forks. Okay. Wow. Just right. shy of three. Just shy of three. You uh, know what? 2.85. That's that. I think that is. I think that's it exactly. Okay. <laughs> I think that is it. You're suggesting that degree of decimal accuracy to the mm-hmm. hundredth of a percentage. 2.85 forks. Hundredth of a point. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. 2.85 forks. It, it just, it's, it's all right, but. Right, like, like I said, what is it? The Manson family, of yeah, course. No, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now it's I'm starting to come back around. I like it. I like I've it. Come <laughs> sort of full circle with it. It was too much, and now it's great. Olive Garden. Look, we we we've we've already touched on 
the versions of the slogan when you're here your family it's now currently we're all family yeah with the freaking oh, Manson wow. family yes, I, <laughs> it's been it's been it's been changed to we're all family here and Mitch you might speculate speculate I, I assume the Manson family probably the case. Manson family yeah okay which isn't any of a real brother and sister type <laughs> family it's um, a bunch of sex weirdos. Yes, it, that feels less in we're we're all family here. Feels less inviting than when you're here, your family. It really does. It doesn't feel there is no implicit suggestion that when you go to the restaurant, right, you are now a part of the family, right? It's mm-hmm. like we're all family here. Yeah, it's 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 like one of those things where it's like the they've they, yeah, they've feel, read the elements of style and they've reduced the number of words, but they've made it less. Yeah, it doesn't like, it doesn't feel inclusive. It's not, no, yeah, it's no, not no. as good. But we're it, family here. Get the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> but but to me, what, what that brings me to is this is a restaurant for families, and I think you know part mm. of the the mission statement of this podcast yeah, is family. to eva- <laughs> to evaluate <laughs> these chains on their own terms and what they're trying to accomplish. And I feel like if you are, there are a lot of families eating there. That's a family. <laughs> if you are a family. If you are a family and you have you have teenagers to feed, uh, you know, on a budget, you can fill them up on the, the salad and breadsticks. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's not real Italian food. Obviously, it doesn't try to be real Italian food. It's this Ital- it's this intentionally generic Italian American version of these dishes that is going to be crowd pleasing. Mm-hmm. And you know, if I if someone recommended me the, the like a bistro and I went to it and I got what I got at the Olive Garden, I'd be like, I'm not going back to this place. But it, it being the Olive Garden and me knowing what it is and wanting it, what it's trying to accomplish, this is the definition of a three fork restaurant. It just okay. does exactly what it's trying to do. Yeah. It it provides mainstream Italian fare for families and for Manson mainstream <laughs> for mainstream <laughs> consumption. And I think it succeeds at it. I, I like the atmosphere. I like the it, I like the service. I like how cheesy it is. I like how it kind of is like it's basically analogous to medieval times, but yeah. for an Italian restaurant. It's like a theme restaurant, basically. <laughs> well, by the way, why when you notice I keep saying Manson families, do you continue to say families a th- ten more times? I was that, trying to goat that, you into saying it. That prayer, that family praying next really touched Nick. Really <laughs> affected <laughs> Nick's experience right. at the restaurant. I really think that's what bumped it up to a three four for him. <laughs> was seeing that family pray in Trump's America. Um, I'll say this. I'll say this too. After yes. almost six years of living in New York, the food, the Italian food at Olive Garden, is worlds better than there are some Italian restaurants like in the Lower East Side that are bigger that aren't. That like anyone who lives in New York knows that they're not good restaurants, right. but they're like near like the the Lower East Side and the, like the theater district and stuff like that, and people go and eat there, and they have like books of things, but they are maybe on the surface more authentic seeming because they're owned by like Italian people in New York City, and they're mm-hmm. not a chain, but the it's just like a a glob of greasy pasta on a plate, yeah, like mm-hmm. and it and I think all of I would rather go to an Olive Garden than. Um, a Danucci's or, you know, right. on, yeah. uh, a, a, an Italian last name that is, you know, I, I in right. New York. I will also say you just made a good point about, like, the, the breadsticks and the salad. It, 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 like, it is just, like you were saying, it's not Italian. It's like how Taco Bell isn't really Mexican right. food. Sure. It just checks this this box. And I, and I appreciate that. And I get that because that's like Domino's pizza isn't the same thing as pizza or whatever. You know, there, there, there's just. Isn't it, though? I mean, it, it is, and it also won our pizza tournament. Yeah. <laughs> but I like, fucking love Domino's. I, but and then other times, like you, you, you're craving. Like I love Domino's too, and I and I yeah. think that people like you can get whatever you want from that place. But then also, like if I'm back in Quincy or something, and there's, I if I want a pizza, I'm not going to get Domino's pizza. That's yeah, uh, That's and I'm not going to get any chain pizza probably. Yeah. Uh. Well, that was so our three forks, Nick. Three forks for me. Well, that was our review of Olive Garden. It's time for a regular segment. We have a fast food item that we bought yesterday, and we're going to see how it held up after spending a night in the fridge. These are the leftovers. I can't wait to see Carrie Coon in an Infinity War. (laughs) (laughs) So, Mitch, as we hear the leftovers season one theme, (laughs) which we never updated, we've never updated. Uh, show's now off the air Had a different theme song For its subsequent seasons I don't think the vibe Would be right Yeah I don't think so either second, yeah. yeah I agree But Mitch Mitch, Talk us through what, what do we have For the leftovers Which we just did On our, our most recent episode But there's a reason We're doing it again The reason we did it Was that we were At Olive Garden last night And they said to us You know When you order a meal here You can do a, another six we'll, we'll, These things that we're, We will pack you Another meal to go 
a six dollar meal insane yeah <laughs> insane that we with that we cool down for so for just six dollars you can get another full meal we got ourselves some bolognese what was it spaghetti? classic spaghetti and Sp- meatballs spaghetti oh spaghetti and meatballs yeah okay. that's as my understanding it might be a spaghetti bolognese i thought but. it was a bolognese but we we decided we didn't have a segment for today. We're gonna do Olive Garden again. Yes. It's, it's, it is. Oh, it is spaghetti bolognese. A spaghetti with meat sauce. Okay, that's, that's great. what it is. This I have eaten this cold so many times throughout my life. Well, we're gonna see how this holds up. So these are. Did they have this when you worked there, Joel? This, this. No, but it it is crazy. <laughs> like, how can they make it more like? cheaper it's just right. insane that like they're trying already you have something that's unlimited yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> well you know sometimes we heat stuff up on here i don't think we should no i don't think so but it does say refrigerate immediately <laughs> which i mean i drove home it took about a half an hour to 45 minutes Uh-oh. that's fine uh for best experience following suggestions below heat and microwave for three to four minutes wow allow to stand for one minute transfer pasta to plate Honestly, but three look, to four minutes seems like a long time. That's a long yeah. time. Look, we're not going to do that. I'll let you guys get in there first. I'll, 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 Joel. Actually, we'll let you. You, you can do the honors of of trying this wow. first. I feel like Italian food is one of those things that should be good cold. Like yeah. I, I like a good cold pasta. I cold have, pizza. I, I, I gotta say, I have high expectations for this. I mm-hmm. think it should be good. Now, I don't. I don't love their spaghetti. I think it's too thick. Mm. Uh, personally, I like I prefer okay. an angel hair. That's just in general. I'm not just saying that about all. Right. Time, it does look. It does. It it looks cold. I will say. <laughs> yeah, you, the, you can apply the eye test to this. <laughs> say this thing that's been sitting in your fridge for a while does look cold. Joel, how, how are you, you? And you can you can hand that over to Nick, unless you want to try another bite. No. Let me take a bite <laughs> of this bad boy. I forgot how good the bolognese there is because. Oh wow. You can taste the Italian sausage really clearly. Mm. Yeah, they, they kind of we, we talked about this, didn't we? Oh no, I may, this might have been. I may I may be putting this to another restaurant. Didn't we say it was kind of sausage heavy over there, Nick? Or was this was this the today's Maybe that's restaurant? Why I like it. <laughs> I think you were talking about your diet in general, Mitch. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I, I think I think I think I think you're right. I think I think there is kind of like a uh, an emphasis on on yeah, sausage. That mm-hmm. is a good bolognese, and I, I think like if I just if I just ate. If I had that leftover in the fridge and I was hungover, mm-hmm. I would like. I would be like, "This is great. This is so satisfying to you right now." Mitch is taking a bite. It kind of like to me that kind of reminds me of because my dad would make spaghetti and he just makes straight up spaghetti and meat sauce. And you know, not to not to compare dad's home cooking to the Olive Garden, but uh, Mr. Engineer is taking a bite right now. Mitch oh, just yeah. took a bite, but it does kind of remind me of my dad's spaghetti. When you just said that. I didn't realize how right you were of how sausage for it's very yeah. it's very sausagey yeah mm-hmm. yeah my dad would use ground beef which I like yeah but, but that's the thing is I think ground beef is so bland yeah the sausage is nice it gives it a nice character to it I I'm I mean like for me this is I always forget our system we just did this and I forgot our system it's, already. it's either we leave it leaving it behind or you take it up to heaven right this one goes up to heaven this 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 I think this does go up to heaven. this one's going up to heaven and hey it's riffing with Jimi Hendrix on guitar oh Stephen Hawking on drums hell yeah Barbara Bush on bass Fern Troyer on vocals on vocals yeah. or maybe go. just to a different dimension Ooh. Oh, that, that's a possibility Wait, too. Is, is, is this is this also a, a leftovers thing? Oh my! Did you not want? We, we haven't seen the show. We, we, oh. we, we, to, to be fair, we haven't seen a second of it. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, rest, in peace, rest in peace to Barbara Bush and Vern Troyer as well. Mm, rest in peace to Vern. Yeah, I'll, call, I'll just go with Vern. <laughs> you don't want to say rest in peace to Barbara? No, I'm good. No. <laughs> oh, I'm good. What the hell? <laughs> I'm good. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say anything else about it. <laughs> Was she evil in some ways? Eh, read a book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joel, what do you think? You, you, you take this up to heaven? Uh, you this definitely time? take this up to heaven. Yeah. Definitely. It's not, it's not anything special, but yeah. I do think the, the, the fennel forward sausage really mm-hmm. does push it's, it over the edge. I want to say that it's almost too much uh, for me. Like, I oh, do, for you, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I, but I was raised on more kind of meaty bolognese instead yeah, of yeah. sausage It's better than ragu. It's, uh, I yeah. think. Oh, yeah. No, this is, this, is, this is going up to heaven, and you know what? I'm not going to fucking share it with Barbara Bush. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to be reading a book. <laughs> not about Barbara Bush. <laughs> about bolognese. Oh, boy. <laughs> I love alliteration. Emma, you like Emma? Thumbs up? 
Thumbs up from Matt Meyer engineer as well. Great. Uh, that was the leftovers, Wait, just like a rest. What's what was that? Bertucci's is closing. I know. It's Wait, what's so Bertucci's? It's I think is the better. It's the New England oh, Olive Garden, wow. which I think is better than Olive Garden. No mm. offense. Mm. And what they do instead of bread, instead of the breadsticks. Uh, uh, did you start just start playing No Doubt? I accidentally started playing No <laughs> Doubt. <laughs> I thought hell? I had my computer muted. Muted. And this is the a next new. Year. It's a new segment. No <laughs> doubt about it. For two cheeses closing. <laughs> I apologize. You really are a SoCal boy. Um, it's no doubt. Whatever. Uh, uh, Bertucci's, they had. They would do like little doughy, like they would just have like doughy bread. Like dinner rolls. Like dinner rolls that were like very doughy that were yeah. made there. That sounds like it was made incorrectly. It, it, they, were so, they, were, they, were so, they were so good. And then they also have big salads, like table salads. Were not, they unlimited? Not, not eating off the table, table freak. Uh, they, it was. They, they, were all, they were all unlimited. Okay. Well. Yep. It was good, and and I think it's it's gonna close I'll, soon. Nick, we I'll get to go soon because I'm gonna be in Boston soon. I would love. To. Please, please, I I mean this sincerely. We will we'll pay for your trip to Bertucci's. <sighs> oh, and, I was gonna say my trip to Boston. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, sh- we'll see. Just do a couple more <laughs> Patreon episodes. <laughs> No way. After you put down Barbara Bush, no way. <laughs> uh, but you, you should track it. But also, Pizzeria Regina is where you should check I will. Maybe I'll DM you when I go. Please. I'm doing yes. Last Boston's in uh, May. And oh. I really want to. Go to the Regina's in the North End. Yes, 100% on Thatcher Street. Can't wait. Thacker Street. I forget how to say it, but uh, in the North End. That's the one. You got to go. Hey, you know what? Just like a restaurant, we value your feedback. Let's open up the feedback. <laughs> and we have a voicemail today. Let's take a listen. Oh, boy. Yo, boys, this is Zach all the way from Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, wow. Um, woke up this morning, and I got two questions. First question, when you're in a rush to get out the door for mm. work this morning like I was, what's your favorite mm. thing to grab on the go? And my second question, when I got in the car, I found a Dum Dum Lollipop uh, in my center console. So, my second question. What is your all's favorite Dum Dum Lollipop flavor? Mm, that's a good uh, I think that's going to be it for the day. Spoon Nation. Hell yeah. Wow. Thanks, Zach. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, Joel? Any, any grab-and-go items? Uh, I have a very regimented diet, and I never get enough protein. I have um, these... Uh, Feed bars, I think they're called. Okay. They're like jerky bars yeah. that I really like. Um, and actually, still a Pop Tart guy. Oh, you know, okay. Good source of carbs. Right. Um, I like a Pop Tart still. Like yeah. Just an untoasted Pop Tart is something I'll grab. And do you have any Dum Dum favoritism? Uh, I love a watermelon Dum Dum and yeah. I love a blue raspberry Dum Dum. Oh, and I love the green apple too. Those things oh. are fucking great. I don't think they ever go bad either. Yeah, I think those are those are uh, those are immortal. I you know I had forgotten the green apple, They're and then immortal. when you said, yeah, I think so. <laughs> they will not die. Uh, they will never join a jam band in heaven. I think I, I had forgotten about the green apple, and when you said it, I was like, oh, I think when I was a kid, because I have not had one of those in twenty years. Yeah. But I think when I was a kid, I, they, I think those green apples were the were, were the way to go for me. I think that might have, I'll, I'll steal that answer. Um, as far as grab and go. Peanut butter sandwich is my current go-to, or or you know, some if I'm just going to eat something quickly, I'll have like a peanut butter banana. But if I'm going to take something that I got to eat with, me, like eight as I'm on the run, I will have some sort of sandwich. Something that's a little bit more contained. But you know, for a while, and I look back on this kind of with revulsion at myself, I used to just take loose lunch meat. No, that's oh. totally legit. Uh, but I would just like have loose lunch meat in my hand mm. and like have that as a meal. I with feel, your, I feel weird about gravy? it. I think that's yeah. fine, and I think that more ans- more so answers his question because the other things you that requires at least minimal effort, but still right. effort. It's not grab and go. You can yeah. grab a lunch meat out of the fridge and just open it up in your car, and it might seem gross, but I think that's totally fine. Okay, good. I'm glad. I don't Mi- think you're gross at all. Thank you, Joel. I Mitch, think, uh, any answers? I think you're gross. <laughs> uh, I, I, so I, I'm, look, I'm looking over Dum Dum. I'm just like looking at images of Dum Dums. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's unre- you didn't hear our que- the question, right? That's just unrelated. <laughs> um, I, it's just left up on his phone from last night. <laughs> <laughs> I, like this, I like the watermelon Dum Dum. I like strawberry and cherry and also grape. I think are, are uh, I mean, I'm, I'm naming a lot. Yeah, but the water. I feel like watermelon when you were a kid was like the, that. Was like the big dumb. Well, dumb. that's because candied watermelon flavored candy doesn't taste like watermelon. That's it is its own flavor. It's its own flavor. Yeah, I like. I said that I like. 
artificial strawberry flavor yeah, more than strawberry, thing. and people got mad at me on the podcast. They're like, you like it more than actual strawberries? Yeah, I fucking do. I <laughs> like it better, all right? It tastes better than stra- strawberries are good. I, I like, like strawberries. Stra- I'd prefer fresh strawberry. I think that's a weird hill you to die nerd, on. nerd, of course you like it more than you like syrup. There, I like that. I get that there's some flavors that are better than the real fruit, but, but strawberries are delicious. A good strawberry? Mm. I just don't feel like you get good strawberries that much. I don't know. Right? I yeah, I mean, know. that's why they're worth it. I, never mind. I don't want to have this fight right now. Yeah, we, we're almost we, done. Yeah, we can't. It's fine. Fight. We're almost done. Um, uh, for the first question, I hate to go food. I, I, eating breakfast in the morning before school always used to get me sick. Like, I'd feel sick during the day. Like, uh, and, and like the sugar rush, like if I ate a Pop Tart or even toaster strudel, I want more toaster strudel and Pop Tart. Right. Who, even, di- who wouldn't want a toaster yeah. strudel? It's better. Sure. Except it does take a, it does take a little bit yeah. more time, and then you can get the, the, you can get the white cream cheese. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you can get the creamy cheese on yourself and stuff. That can be a disaster. Uh, I would I would try to do a bagel and cream cheese, but if it is like a true rush, which is that you can't do a bagel and cream cheese, you can't even toast anything. I guess like a cold pop pop tart. But I, uh, before that, I would just do like a like not a power bar, but like a like an oatmeal bar with mm. like either oh, sure. raisins or chocolate chips yeah, yeah, in yeah. it or something like that. I think that's my answer. Hmm. Hey, let us know your favorite uh, hashtag grab and go and hashtag. Dum Dum Smarts. And hey, if you have a question or comment about the world Jesus of chain restaurants, Christ. you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 830 go Doe. That's 830-463-6844. To get the Doughboys Double, our weekly bonus episode, join the Golden Blake Club at patreon.com slash Doughboys. I just want to quickly say that yes. I feel like we're going to get roasted for both of those answers. There's something that we're missing. We're yeah, well, that's why we have the hashtags. Yeah, all right. All right. Roast us in the hashtags. Joel Kim Booster, thank you so much thank for giving you. us so much of your valuable time. Yes. Do you have anything you would like to plug at this time? Mm, um, um, mm, uh, when does this come out? This will be out the first week of May. Yes. <laughs> May 3rd. May the 4th Eve. May the 4th hey, be with you, Mitch. May the wow. 4th be with you as well, Nick. I feel like I have dates somewhere in May. Unkar Plutt be. is coming down the chimney, <laughs> ready to put a quarter portion under the oh, tree. <laughs> oh, if you're in North Carolina, I'm headlining the Dead Crow Comedy Theater in Wilmington, North Carolina, on the eight the weekend of the 18th. Uh, I think I'll be there like the 17th, 18th, and 19th. It's one of my favorite comedy clubs in the country. Hell and you yeah! Should go. All right, and listeners, out. check that out. Yeah, and that'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. And all next time for the Spoonman, Mike Mitchell. I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating. See ya. Hey guys, you want more Doughboys? To get the Doughboys Double, our weekly bonus episode, join the Golden Plate Club. Sign up at patreon.com slash doughboys. Do it. That was a HeadGum Podcast.